Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back. It is April 9th, 2024, and we are back in here today with an open discussion, open panel, open forum, talking about Sebastian Rogers, Caleb Harris, the Oklahoma moms, and more, guys. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you all very much. It is great to see you all here. So, that being said, as I said, guys, we're going to talk about everything, kind of continuing what yesterday's show was. Let's get this show out of here and out on that road. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, 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 what's going on, y'all? Welcome back. Great to have you here. Great to see you guys today. So very happy to be here with you. Oh, Ooh, hold on. Oops. One second here. Here we go. Having mistakes all over the place. Alfie wants to say hi to you. Say hello. Say hello. Hi. Hope you guys are doing great today. Welcome back, everybody. Again, like I said, we're having um, a wide open, continued from yesterday, per se, a wide open discussion about Sebastian Rogers, Caleb Harris, and uh, it, just everything, guys. So welcome in for that. Hey, buddy. He likes to be part of this. The other one doesn't want nothing to do with me in this in this chair, but this one wants to be all over me. So say hello, sir. You want to say hi? No? No? No, he's saying no. He doesn't want to talk. So anyway, for those of you that aren't familiar, this is our new puppy, Alfred, or Alfie, whatever you want to call him. He's a good boy. He really is, aren't you? And he's cute as all get out, so. This is the, the true crime cafe puppy. Isn't that right? Are you the puppy? Is that who you are? Are you the Dago puppy? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, that's what everybody says. My wife said, I just want to eat him. I'm like, well, no, you can't eat him. Uh, I'll have to check, uh, Salty. I'll have to check. I've been kind of busy throughout the day, not really checking things. Let me see.
Okay, I did get it. Thank you very much, uh, Salty. We'll be talking about that as well. Thank you for throwing that at me. My wife says the same thing, Moni. She swears to God that me and that dog look alike. So I guess we'll be checking that out too. That's new to me, but we will check it out. Thank you much for that, Salty, very much. Come on in, everybody. We got 106 awesome peeps in here today for this and 62 likes, 63 likes. Come on, guys. We can do better than that. Um, yeah, good point, uh, Deception. I think we're all confused on that. Speaking of everybody, let's see who we got in here with us today. Taking time out of your crazy awesome days to spend it with me. Little old me. So come on in and let's see. Welcome, Golf Inspector. We're great to have you back today. Brian's Ramblings. Bry guys in the house. Thank you for joining us, Brian. Michelle Brook, welcome back to you. Miss Carolyn Miller, always a pleasure. Never fails. Every time I'm live, this lady's here. So thank you for your support uh, and loyalty, Carolyn. That means the world to me. My baby, welcome back to you. Great to see you. Smiling sleuth. Hey, hey. Um, again, guys, please tell me how I sound. I'm using a different microphone today. Because the other one, if everybody was saying I was too loud, no matter what I did, it stopped coming out that way. Uh, that's awesome, Salty, too, because that's what I want. Speaking of Salty, thank you for joining us today, Salty. Um, through Crime Time Mods, if we can drop her link again, I need you guys to be checking out Salty's channel, guys. She is positively nothing but the facts, ma'am. That's what it is. So please go check her out. Show some love, and you will not be disappointed. Uh, Tracy, again, welcome back to you. Great to see you. Shay Shay W, welcome back. Good to see you. Or welcome. Uh, great to see you. Um, Moni's in the house. You better behave today, Moni, because you about killed me. My my ribs still hurt. Um, ja Janie Roll, 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 thank you for joining us today. Appreciate seeing you. Carly Ray Savage, welcome back to you. Uh, la, 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 la. Deception Dismantled's in the house. Welcome back to you. Great to have you here. Mr. Steve, welcome back, brother. SWTC's in the house. Thank you for joining us today. War Eagle, welcome, welcome. And once again, welcome to all my amazing moderators. Thank you all for joining me today. For doing what you do, I couldn't do this without you, nor would I try. So thank you for being who you are and doing what you do for me. I appreciate you very much for this channel, not just me, but this whole channel. Uh, let me see. We also got four victims first. I love it. Love it. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you very much. Noni McPoppins, welcome back to you. Great to see you. Lake Superior Girl, hey, hey, welcome back to you. Angel D, what's going on? Good to see you today. Neil Homestead, welcome back, my friend. Good to have you here. Uh, um, come on in. Tammy, welcome. Good to have you back. Crazy Linda, welcome, welcome. Great to see you today. Thank you for joining us. Andy Rose, welcome back to you. Great to see you in the house. Love seeing all these meatballs in here. Appreciate you very much. Heather, good to see you today. Uh, Chemistry Queen, welcome back to you. KL Wingate, welcome back and uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, let's see. Sunshine's in the house. Love it, love it. Thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you very much. D Smith, welcome back to you. As always, Kim Marin, thank you for joining us today, my dear. I appreciate you very much. And that goes for all of you. Ro, welcome back to you. Come on in, guys. Get a chair, get a seat, get a couch, whatever you need. Throw a blanket on the floor. I don't care. Come on in and hang out with us, please, if you will. Brian, already thank you, my friend, for dropping the $2 super sticker. That's absolutely amazing, Brian. And thank you so very much for that. I appreciate you so very much. Miss Kimber, welcome back to you. Great to see you today. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. I got change. That's awesome. Thank you for joining us. Is it a bag of Doritos? It is. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Uh, make sure I get everybody up top here. Miss Noel, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you very much. Um, Let's see. Did I miss anybody? Did I not miss anybody? And again, just to reiterate, guys, yes, this is a wide open discussion. Miss Debbie Clark, welcome back. Dakota, great to see you today. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, this is a wide open discussion. Mocha, welcome back to you. Spooky Paws, great to see you. Revival, same to you. Baby Fireflies in the house, welcome. Great to have you here. Thank you for joining us. No feet today. That's right. 
Uh, Virginia Anderson, thank you for being here today. I appreciate you. Clarissa Hendershot, great to see you today. Um, one moment here. Let me check something up top here. Little bit, baby. Tomboy Charms in the house. Welcome back, Tomboy. Let me hit the bottom. Miss B. Williams, welcome back to you. Cluminati's in the house. There she is. There she was. Uh, that's W. I can never say it. Like, Fire. Firefly. Maybe. SW Firefly. Welcome. 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 Uh, Miss Wisdom Speaks in the house. Welcome back, Miss Sherry. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I know Brandy's in here somewhere. I just can't see her yet. Um, Ann, welcome. Good to have you here. Good. There she is. Brandy B. The only OG. Good to see you here and with me. As always, no doubt. I didn't see you till now, dear. I'm not ignoring you. I promise. Kate Pruitt, welcome back. Great to have you here. Great to see you. Uh, let me see here. Welcome, Jeff. Good to see you today, sir. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you very much. And that goes for all of you guys. Miss Kells, thank you so much for joining us. Virginia Wolf, my brother, good to see you. Not a drama nana in the house. That's the nana. We got the channel mom, mother is Wisdom Speaks in the nana. We have a nana and the channel mother. So, hey, oh we're covered all the way around. Miss Kells, of course, good to see you. I got change. All right, all right. Thank you, Miss Brandy, for that. And thank you to every single person that has ever donated to this. Any one of these links to support this channel, which pays the bills, guys. It pays for the internet. It pays for the stream yards. It pays for all the other little things that I need to do to run this on a, a, a everyday basis. And I'm telling you, it's never, ever, ever expected from anybody, but is greatly, greatly appreciated. Good golly, Miss Molly's in the house now, too. We got the whole gang here and then some. Mind of Monsters, welcome back to you. Great to see you today. Another great channel. If we could drop the link to uh, Mind of Monsters channel too, please. We got some links to drop in here for sure. I would greatly appreciate that. Mind of Monsters channel, guys, is devoted to missing children, missing persons, period, in general. And it's a great channel. She does a great, great job over there. So please, guys, uh, if we can get that link in here, somebody... And please go check that out. Show the support you can for her because she's a hard-working lady over there. I tell you that much. Most definitely. Thank you guys that uh, for last night, by the way. I had a great time last night. Didn't mean to, but it happened anyway. So I was very, very pleased with the end of that show. It was a nice way to let off a little steam for sure. Um, all right. There's the link there. Again, we need to drop that link and guys please go check it out show some love if you will of course we know cluminati's in here uh if you don't already have her channel uh linked up guys please check her out too uh and initially there was another one i had in here that i want to drop to in the very beginning where did it go where did it go hold on a minute here uh again please check out mind of monsters if you will i would greatly appreciate that more than you know Again, on the way in the door, hit that like button, guys. There's 133 people in here with only 79 likes. Come on now. Let's make that match and get this out in that algorithm. Hey, Thor, welcome, my friend. Good to see you today. Uh, Don F., welcome. Great to have you. I love the new faces, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us and, and for trying this out today, stopping by or yesterday or the last day before that. You don't have to be a member here to be here, folks. Please understand that. Um. We just appreciate you supporting the cause that we're trying to get out there. So please understand. Uh, very much. SRB's in the house. Welcome back, SRB. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry to hear that clue. I hope you feel better. Uh, let me see here. Oh, that's right. Miss Salty. Uh, true Crime Time. If we can please drop that link in here somewhere, guys. Another great channel. Coming with nothing but facts, guys. Nothing but facts. She doesn't play the games. I promise you. You will be definitely, definitely uh, pleased once you check out her channel. So please, if we can drop that one too. Um, so as I appreciate the creators that are in here with us uh, that are supporting this as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I need to do it again? I thought I did it once, but okay, asshat. No problem. There we go. Um, 
Come on in, everybody. Grab your coffee, tea, whatever it may be. Please come on and sit down and have a conversation with me. We got lots to talk about, of course. Welcome back, Miss JC Ann. Thank you for joining us. There's Salty's link. Thank you very much for that. Um, again, this lady is hard working, guys. Please check her out. She has this and she's got a TikTok too, but this channel here, we're trying to grow this channel for her because she really needs to get it out there. So thank you for that. Very much, Miss Brandy and SRB, both of you. <laughs> thank you guys. Appreciate it very much. I know you are. I know you are, Clue. Don't worry. We have that. We have that that relationship, guys. We're actually pretty decent, pretty good friends, and uh, we can do that back and forth. So, yeah, she's always misbehaving. You always got to have one of them, you know, one of the class clowns around to keep things moving. That's all. Smiling Sleuth, welcome back. Good to see you today. Come on in, everybody. Get comfortable. Welcome, Steve's a new member. That's awesome. Appreciate you very much, Mr. Steve. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, guys, please let me know how I sound on this mic. I've been tell being told that I'm too loud, and I need to know if I am because I don't want to blow your guys' eardrums out and talk over everybody. So I changed out the microphone to try to make it see if it made a difference. Uh, is this any better or worse or the same? Angel D, good to see you today. Or Eagle. I sound good. Okay, not too loud then. All right. I don't want to be too loud because I don't I don't want anybody thinking I'm trying to over talk everybody. <clears throat> good deal. Good deal. Good deal. The mic is very but looks great. It's the same to me. It sounds the same. Maybe it was just that specific people that have it turned up too loud. I don't know. Either way, um, hopefully it works. I don't really care for this whole light up thing, but well, it sounded like we were at the eye doctor. What the hell, Molly? <laughs> that's new. You used to sound muffled, but good now. Oh, well, that's good to know. I didn't know that. You guys got to tell me these things. Maybe it just needs to be a better mic. That's all. Thank you, Kels. Good. I hope it's clear. I didn't know I was muffled. If I would have known that, we'd have done this a long time ago. So, like I said, guys, this is an open discussion. And uh, we're gonna we'll have the panel open. I'm gonna open up the phone lines. We're gonna talk about this stuff, but I want to clear something up in the very beginning. Once again, I'm not doing this show today to have people come in and trash. The proud front feet or south rod any of that we're not going to do that that's not what this is about we're here to talk about the investigation if something that pertains to one of them pertains to the investigation sure we'll talk about it um but we're not in here to do that guys that's not what it's about the focus needs to stay on sebastian rogers period not chris and katie proudfit not Seb uh, seth rogers not anybody else just sebastian that's all i ask guys and once again, well, just like with the two rules that I have here for anybody that's newer in here, please, all I ask, guys, is that you do not do any kind of victim bashing. I know nobody's going to do that in this case at all because this is a child. And please, there's going to be differences of opinion in here, folks. Everybody is welcome to have their own opinions and thoughts and feelings on something. So please, please respect others' opinions and others' feelings. We don't have to agree. We can walk away friends at the end of the day without agreeing on a damn thing, guys. It's it's normal. It's okay. Um, that's all I'm saying. So please just respect each other's thoughts and opinions and feelings. You don't even have to respect me. Respect each other. That's all I ask ever. Other than that, free reign, folks. Free reign, okay? Uh, I appreciate all of you guys abiding by that for sure. Um, this is a 360 mic, Jeff, so it should be good to go. The other one, I don't know. It might not be. Um, I've had this microphone for like a year. I've only used it once, Clue. I don't care about the light. Everything else I have lights up, so I don't need this. Um, 
I don't even know. Plus, yours is a, a white. I can't understand somebody having a white microphone either, but whatever. I guess it's got to be all pretty, pretty. That's right. We are. Welcome, Tammy. We're all adults. We can all act like adults and treat each other that way, too. And that's it. That's absolutely it. Thank you, Sherry. We don't walk in their shoes. We don't deal with what they deal with on a daily basis. We don't we don't have that right to judge them, honestly, in my opinion. And once again, all that does is take the focus off. When we start talking about their past and what they did to each other and all this and that and everything else, guess what? Sebastian ends up in the back. That's not where he belongs. He belongs right up front, first place. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. I, most people don't like that I say that I don't care if you respect me, but thank you, Virginia. I appreciate that very much. Um, very, very much. So, um, oh, baby, I don't do that very often. I don't do that at all. So don't, uh, you got to get pretty nasty in here to be able to do that. You got to be, you got to be pretty nasty to do that in here, but I will not put up with one thing. You can say whatever you say to me, guys. I don't care. Um, I won't put up with anybody talking down to other people. I, I really, if I catch it in here, I try to handle it right there. I just don't deal with that at all. Um, so come on in guys, 144 peeps in here. We still only got 91 likes. We can do better than that. Come on, please. Let's get this in that algorithm where it belongs. So everybody Everybody can hear about Sebastian Rogers and Caleb Harris and these missing Oklahoma moms when we talk about it, please. And I appreciate that, Salty. That's the whole point right there. What Chris says in this interview that we talk about, it's only about the investigation, and that's what I want to stick to. So we're going to look, we're going to listen to that, check it out, and then we'll talk about it too. Thank you very much, Deception. And that I goes for all of you guys. I absolutely adore each and every one of you guys for supporting me the way you do for supporting the causes that we cover as you do and all of the things that you guys say considering myself and my family i mean i i there's not even words guys there's not words not words at all uh, i i love each and every one of you guys to no end guys i really do so thank you for being here and for so supporting me the way you do <clears throat> apart from me Dago was always calling, oh my God, Angel, get the hell out of here with that. You know better than that. Such a comedian here. By the way, Angel's joking, guys, so don't, don't get all crazy about it. Uh, Miss Joanne, welcome back. Good to see you. And of course, that's, that's all I ask. Thank you, Joanne. I know you do. I know you have your own thoughts and opinions, and I have my own. All I'm asking is we're not doing that in here because it's not about that. We need to focus on Sebastian. So I know you'll respect that. Thank you very much, Joanne. Um, thank you, Kim, very much. I love you. all of you guys very much. Liz, thank you for the super sticker very much. I appreciate that very much. Um, come on, come on, come on. Let's see. Mark and Betty, welcome. Good to have you. Well, that's about where we're at with this too, Sherry. Um, I, that's why I wanted to have to finish what we had started yesterday uh, as far as the uh, open conversation. And I need to cover more cases too. You know, I don't want this to fall into uh, what I call the Idaho effect where we sit on this for six months. I'll continue coming in with updates on this. I'll never let this drop because I cannot even stand the thought of this going cold. That's a fact. Um, oh, uh, so that's going to be what it is, guys. You know, we have to keep going and keep going and keep going. So, um, Demon Dog, welcome back to you. Good to see you today. Uh, for anybody that would like to become a member, there is the way to do it. Lozy 2007, welcome. Good to have you here. I think it's Lozy or Lozy. Either way, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, la, 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 that's the link. If you guys want to become a meatball and jump in the sauce with the rest of us. Okay. So I'm going to open up 
one second here. I'm going to do this now, but we're going to check something out. Salty sent me first. And then we'll be opening everything up, phone lines and all that fun stuff. Let me do that there. All right, that's pinned in the chat. Great stuff. Yeah, we're at like 44 days that Sebastian's been missing. It's 44 days too much, in my opinion. So we need to make sure that we continue focused on this and nothing but this when we're talking about this, guys. And again, every time I talk about Sebastian, I like to see if I can, if, if the chat would light it, light it up with the green hearts and support of Sebastian. I do that every time. That tells me that everybody in here supports this and, and supports Sebastian. So if you guys could please light up the chat with those hearts, I would greatly appreciate that. And God bless. Autumn Fragrance, welcome to you. That's a cool name, Autumn Fragrance. I love that. Um, Tracy again. Looks like Tracy again uh, gifted five memberships. Uh, DS, Tammy, Smiling Sleuth, Mr. Jeff H, and Carly Ray Savage were all gifted memberships. That's very awesome. Thank you for that. And thank you. And welcome to all the new meatball. Uh, it is so very much appreciated, Tracy, more than you know. And again, welcome to the new meatballs. We appreciate you being part of this family, part of this community so very much. And look at that. You guys are amazing. All those green hearts. You guys rock and roll. I love it. Mittens for kittens. Welcome. Great to see you today. All right, guys. And if, if you don't have the green hearts available, just it doesn't matter, guys. Just throw a heart in there or something. I know you're here. That's all. It's no big deal. I understand. Not everybody has that ability. Jimmy Ray, welcome. Good to see you. Autumn fragrance is better than bottom fragrance. Yes, it is, Angel D. Yes, it is. All right. All right. All right. Okay, so we got a couple things we're going to check out. I guess Nancy came out with something new, too. So I guess if it's got an update in it, I want to check it out. Anything that has any form of an update, I want to check it out. So we'll be checking a couple things out, guys. Um, see if there is even just a small fragment of something new um, when it comes to Sebastian's scenario. So we will be checking that out real fast here much as I don't want to, it's, it's worth it. And okay. And please let me know how the audio sounds to any of this stuff, guys. Let's go. Sours, the bio dad and grandparents of missing autistic boy, Sebastian Rogers, hold a vigil where everyone vows that Sebastian will be brought home safe and sound. Will he? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories as we continue joining in the search for. Hold on. Walt Harris is in the house and I damn you, Walt, for doing that with the food thing. Yes, I have. It's the best sandwich place in this in the planet. And shame on you for bringing it up when I can't get to it. Thank you for joining us, Walt, very much. Sebastian, first of all, take a listen to this. Have the two of you taken a polygraph? I have. I have not. Would you be willing to? I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph, and I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. I understand. Ms. Proudfoot, did you pass your polygraph? I did. That's not exactly what has been stated before by Sebastian Rogers' stepfather, Mr. Proudfoot. Listen. 
And Mr. Proudfoot, you have volunteered to take a poly? Yes, ma'am. If I were to set up a poly for you, would you take it? Name the place and time, ma'am. I'll be there. Joining me in All-Star Panel to make sense of what we're hearing right now, but first to Dave Mack, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter. Dave Mack, isn't it true that CrimeOnline.com did set up a polygraph? Absolutely true. And what happened? He, uh, Chris Proudfoot, told us that he had to, he could not take it now. He wanted to, but he can't because the TBI told him not to. It's my understanding to Cheryl McCollum joining us. Uh, Cheryl McCollum, founder and director of the Cold Case Research Institute, forensics expert and host of Zone 7 podcast. Cheryl, it's my understanding that specifically Sebastian's stepfather said he could no longer do interviews, including with us, because he had been instructed so by the TBI and Jackie, correct me if I'm wrong, that they did not want any of his interviews to interfere with the investigation. And that even though he had agreed to do our polygraph, he now says that the TBI is going to set up their own polygraph and he can't take our polygraph until after that. And once he does that, then quote, we'll take it from there. What do you make of it? You know, you and I always go back to Mark class. If you want to make sure that the law enforcement has everything they need to get rid of looking at you, you can do that. He can set up a private polygraph through an attorney. He can take yours. He can demand that TBI give him one so that they can stop focusing on him and this polygraph business and move on and find out where Sebastian is at, period. I mean, Cheryl McCollum, you and I can go right now and pay for a polygraph. They'd be right. happy to take our money. Hey, just put it on a credit card and, and take a polygraph. TBI would be happy. Let to it go, Nancy. Let it polygraph. go. Polygraph is a polygraph. And the examiner, that's who you're relying on. So you've got somebody that's going to be willing to testify and put their reputation on the line. Again, he could make this happen today if he wanted to. Let's go straight out to Joseph Scott Morgan. Uh, professor of Forensics, Jacksonville State University, author of Blood Beneath My Feet on Amazon and star of a hit series, Body Bags with Joe Scott Morgan. Joe Scott, thank you for being with us. You know what? This is like static in my ears because I know tick tock, tick tock. As long as we focus on the stepfather and the mother, Hello, so Mama I'm, Bear. I'm losing time. If by some stretch of the imagination, Sebastian is still alive, if he's alive, he won't be much longer. What do the stats show? What What is your opinion? I need it, and I need it now, Joe Scott. Yeah, the, the biggest thing that we're looking at is this idea of time. We're talking about a young man uh, that went missing back in February, Nancy, late February. And as we move down that timeline, uh, you know, the odds are, are stacked against him. I think one of the most important pieces that's kind of arisen out of this, other than all of the comments that have been made to this point relative to polygraphs and those sorts of things, is, are those eyeglasses. And I love the shot the producers put up of him standing in front of that rack of, of eyeglasses, because that's going to tell the tale, I think. If they can specifically tie those to him, that's very important. They can take that script off of those glasses, determine if they are his. I don't think they're and, his glasses, Joe Scott. I don't well, think they're his glasses. At this point in time, you have to work with what you have. If they're not his, then that, that points us down a different road, doesn't it? And so okay, let's go with, let's go with, they're not his glasses. And I'll tell you why I'm saying that, Joe Scott. I yep. was thrilled. I mean, uh, you, know, you might want to jump in on this, Cheryl. Remember, we're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. But it's a sad day when you're excited, when you're thrilled, you think you find a missing boy's glasses. Why was I thrilled? Because it was a clue for a moment. And then the TBI confirmed they're not his glasses. So I see where you're going, Joe Scott, but it's a sad day when we're all thrilled to find a pair of beat up glasses on the side of the road. But I was. So where does that leave me, Joe Scott? As we're all like, take a poly, take a poly. Why won't he take a poly? What really happened? Was he at work? Was he not at work? Well, we're. Okay. We needed to breathe for a minute. Damn. All right, moving forward. I can't even, I can't play her fast because she, no. We're all gnashing our teeth and switching our tails trying to figure out about Mr. Proudfoot. If this kid, this child is out there with his autism kicking in, giving him problems, what's going to happen? The likely scenario, Joe Scott, as we're spinning our wheels on Proudfoot. Yeah, if this is, you know, we're, we're talking about Hendersonville, Tennessee, uh, Nancy, which is 10 miles outside of Nashville. But, you know, really quickly up there, that area becomes very rural. And so if he has wandered off or been taken off in any number of directions, it, his ability or survivability is greatly diminished here. And what the police are doing right now is if you think about the last known location of him, that's the center of the target. And they're working from concentrically to eccentrically. They're moving out in these big circles. But it's such a broad, densely wooded area 
this is a this is a Herculean task to say the least. I think that some of the answers are going to rest in the idea that whoever had control over him, his comings and goings. We're talking about a kid that has been diagnosed with autism. Whoever had control over his comings and goings, their electronics need to be tracked, Nancy. Those ideas of where did they go at those times when he was last seen alive? And that's going to be one of the threads that you're going to want to pull in this investigation. You know, Cheryl McCollum, host of Zone 7, is a forensic expert, as you know, Joe Scott Morgan, death investigator. Cheryl, you've had quite a lot to say online. What about now? Cat got your tongue? Because I don't like that. You're pretty bold. No. When nobody's questioning you. But what about no, now? I, I want to hear your analysis. Here's my problem. Their statements. You've got inconsistencies. As soon as somebody changes their story at all, they should become the focus. Period. Mom has said different things. Now you've got a stepdad that looks like he's co-signing with everything that she says, but he allegedly wasn't there. So how can he agree with anything that she's saying? You've got mom saying she heard a thud. I don't like that word. That sounds like a body hitting the floor. When people use the word thud, that's not sounded like he hit the wall, sounded like something. No, wrong. it's never a good thing. It's usually preceded no. by uh, an adjective sickening, a sickening thud. Right. And Nancy, you've got other things. You've got mom saying he went to the end of the driveway to put out the trash. And then you've got law enforcement searching a landfill. They're searching lakes. They're searching ponds. If you're watching and paying attention to law enforcement, it does not seem to me that they are looking to recover a child alive. They are searching for remains. You and I both know, and Joe Scott knows, when a child goes missing, the, thir the first three hours are critical. We're at six weeks. Six weeks that this child has not been seen or heard from. Okay, six hold on. Why are you saying, Cheryl McCollum, hey, that you believe they don't expect to find Sebastian alive based on their actions. I'm talking about LA law enforcement. Their searches. They're searching landfills, lakes, yeah. ponds. That is not indicative of somebody that is alive. And again, you've got a child that has gone six weeks without his medicine, six weeks without food that we know of. He didn't have a source, no shoes. It's already been told to us that he could survive without the medications. Okay. And they very well could be just looking for items that lead them to what could have happened in a sense or at the same time yes she is right in some senses i do agree um like i said he can survive without his medications that's not a detrimental thing we were told that i think by both sides honestly so um uh you can talk in all caps i don't care that's never bothered me as long as it doesn't bother anybody else and mama herself says oh a flashlight's missing Again, that's such an odd thing for her to know is missing until they show her video that looks like a flashlight. And then the stat dad says, well, we were sure hoping it was, but we're sad to report it wasn't a flashlight. Well, if you've got two flashlights out there, why are you glad hey, it's really? not that? That, to me, would signify that somebody was out there in the wee hours of the morning with two flashlights, meaning two separate people, the night your child went missing. I mean, it's just odd. What they do you make of a three-hour conversation held between yeah. Mrs. Proudfoot and Mr. Proudfoot the night Sebastian disappears? The three-hour phone call bothers me. Because Roll tide, that's brother. That's a long time to be on the phone. And, you know, you're hearing your son supposedly. He's answering you supposedly during that time. But you don't go check on him at all. You know, did now, I'm going to argue with some of these things, I'll be honest with you. When my wife goes to Alabama and I don't go with her, we spend five and six hours on the phone nonstop, okay? Um, just because we've spent 23 years together and spending time apart is not normal for us and we both miss each other. So why is that so that that could have just been what it was, Okay. And I'm not defending the proud feet here. Don't take that that way at all. All I'm saying is some of these things that have been pinpointed, they don't prove 
anything, really, guys. So her husband's in Memphis and she's not. He's all, he's gone for a long periods of time. If they're if they have a even a, a semi decent relationship, she probably gets lonely, guys. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. If I don't see my wife every single day, I get sick. That's fact. I love her. I enjoy her. I like spending that time with her. So I'm just saying, it's one of them things, guys. We we're, we're on the phone all the time when she hell. She doesn't even work but 45 minutes from here, or not even 45 minutes, a half an hour from here. And you guys have been live with me when she calls me multiple times. That's just who we are. Some people are like that. Some people aren't. It's understandable, but, you know, it is what it is. So understand that that doesn't really mean much. Did somebody leave their phone just on while they went and did something else? I don't know. But I agree with Joe Scott, the electronics. Welcome, Br uh, Becky Schreider. When his mama first entertained the idea that somebody had him, what did she base that on? His phone's not missing. He didn't take shoes, didn't take clothes, didn't take money. Nothing on his cell phone, nothing on his computer says that he's been talking to anybody. Exactly. I mean, she's entertaining something that we have no facts for. Well, we I'm concerned no about the, uh, and you're right, whenever I hear inconsistent statements as I've discussed many many times in front of juries it's one thing to add that's a huge point embellish your original statement because maybe you weren't asked the right questions first time around maybe you remembered something in addition triggered by questions. i understand jimmy but when you change your story that's a problem to joe scott morgan joining us uh professor of jacksonville jacksonville state university um joe scott Let's look at where the searches are being conducted. Yeah. We know the law enforcement search has been scaled back. I want to hear, since you are a death investigator, we all three have been on many, many searches. For we missed you too, bro, guy. And who we believe to be dead. Um, I want to hear your analysis. What can we glean from looking at what law enforcement is doing Back to Cheryl's point about landfills and ponds. Ponds you, or water, water, bodies of water, you can think that, well, you have people that can um, just wander into these locations, okay? Particularly somebody that might be in a compromised state like this young No, I understand a little bit, uh, and welcome, by the way. Physical uh, status at this point in time. But when you start to talk about landfills, Nancy, this is a rather dark, dark thing. I've been to landfills multiple times conducting death investigations. And those are locations where we're talking about the discarding of. Before anybody goes eight wild crazy with this theory, OK? We saw this, this same thing happen in um, the Quentin Simon case, OK? There's a difference with this, though. There was a statement made when they spoke to the uh, sanitation workers that collected the garbage that day. There was a statement made by one of the workers that their garbage can seemed a little heavier than normal. That is going, if I was law enforcement, the first I would just drop what I was doing and ran directly to that place to understand something, though, guys. They spent not even a full day there. Not even a whole day. They were in and out. Boom, boom, boom. You're not going to find much in, in an eight-hour period of time going through a landfill, okay? So <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. With Quentin Simon, they spent weeks at this landfill with multiple, multiple people searching, okay? So it, I, don't, I don't think the landfill is a serious thing. It's a protocol issue based on what they a tip that they got from the, not even a tip, but a comment that was made by a sanitation worker. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of weight into that. I haven't never from the beginning. Okay. Um, and, and I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it, it could have had something more to it. And that's all they let on to the public. That's we know that we've talked about that, but I think if it was bigger or more important, they would have spent a lot more time with a lot more uh, forensics detectives there. That's just an opinion I have. I could be wrong. It's okay. And when I'm wrong, I'll say I was wrong. That's all. Just saying. That is all I'm saying. Hey, Truth Seeker, good to see you. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, so, moving forward. Remains. 
Now, here's another interesting point. The fact that the landfill is all the way up. You mean Kentucky. he didn't just walk into a landfill and fall over? No, and certainly not in Kentucky. This is specifically. They could have been suspect of the garbage workers, considering it's the only vehicle in the neighborhood that we were told also that it was in that, that video. Okay, so yeah, I agree with Clue on that one for sure. Um, so there's that too. Another good point. Targeted. Now, from my understanding is that landfill is used to surf it or serve this particular area. And landfills are very complex environments. They're gridded off. Essentially, they know where they're going to do dumpings. Um, it's not like they randomly go into these locations and just back the truck up. They go to specific locations. But with landfills, they're highly complex. They're layered. And so you, as you begin to stack items in there, they then run over them with this heavy equipment. And it makes, it makes the, the going very, very tough. As a matter of fact, anything that gets in there begins to degrade and decompose very quickly. That's the purpose of it. And so that is not a good sign, Nancy. And the fact that they are searching a landfill is rather ominous to me. Nancy, I want to, to Dave Matt, CrimeOnline.com. No, I was just coming to you because I wanted to talk I'm to sorry. you, Dave Mack, on two issues and whatever else you want to interject. Please, I need everybody's thoughts. Um, one, I want to get from you any previous inconsistent statements as correctly stated by Cheryl McCollum. And two, allegations that Sebastian, this autistic boy was molested have emerged let's start with the inconsistent statements very quickly do we really have to go back to this again this is this is insane nancy you're better than this come on from the very beginning nancy uh chris proudfoot made statements in interviews online uh claiming he actually said somebody asked the question was a polygraph taken and has it been passed yes i didn't specify who or when but what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as passed. So I'm confused as in why they are all wondering if myself, my wife, and the biological father took. Okay, we know that's a lie. We know that is absolutely a lie because of what he told you on your show. But you're saying that that's what Proudfoot said, that he had taken a polygraph, he and his word wife, and had been, quote, vetted. Okay. Yes, yes he, he did has... say that on, on, a, on a podcast. Go ahead. Okay, and then we also have the the belt. You know, we have hitting hitting Sebastian with the belt. I don't know if you caught this, but you know, when Seth Rogers was on your show last week, when we were talking about the the belt, he started. Crying. Um, I saw later. Hey, Terry, welcome, hon. He wasn't aware of the corporal punishment that Chris Proudfoot was handing out to his son, to Seth Rogers' autistic son. And you know, we pointed out that. He, uh, Proudfoot, claimed it was years ago, and it was one spank with the belt on his butt, but through clothing, which makes no sense to any parent in the history of mankind or any teacher at school that they would actually look into something through clothing like that. But they couldn't remember when, how long ago it was. And then in another interview, he said 15, which means it had to have been in the last several months. So we've got a number of Did it Sebastian turn 15 in December? Correct. And it went missing February 26th. So if he was 15 when he got um, a whack with a belt, that would have been in the last few months just before he disappears. So which one is true? Was it three years ago or was it when he was 15 years old? Um, another question. Allegations that Sebastian was molested have now emerged. What can you tell us? From Seth Rogers. Uh, Sebastian's biological father, Seth Rogers, said that when the Proudfoots, when uh, Katie and Chris Proudfoot and Sebastian were living in an apartment in California a couple of years, several years ago, that Katie Proudfoot allowed a uh, boy that was five years older than Sebastian to play with Sebastian, and the boy was 13, Sebastian was eight at this time. She allowed it. And Seth Rogers said that Chris, uh, Katie Proudfoot allowed a 13-year-old boy to play with Sebastian, who was eight, un without any kind of involvement from Katie Proudfoot, and that during the time, this 13-year-old molested and raped Sebastian Rogers. 
It seems the more we investigate, um, the murkier the facts become. Welcome, it's Tori. Thank you. Every day, literally every hour that Sebastian Rogers is missing is one hour. Thank you, Kat, and welcome to, to you. Being dead. Can we tune out all the static in the noise and try to focus on finding this autistic boy? And to you, Mr. Proudfoot, our offer is still on the table for a polygraph free of charge to you. I'll pay for it out of my pocket. We wait as the search goes on. Okay, so there's really nothing new. She had a few experts and they voiced their opinions. Um, sorry, guys. They voice their opinions, and, and I, I respect that, okay? But again, it really doesn't have a, a, a bearing on, on MIA welcome, a bearing on finding him, in my opinion, okay? If, if, if something comes out down the road that they... It's concrete proof that Chris Proudfoot, Katie Proudfoot, or Seth Rogers had anything to do with the disappearance of this child. Uh, guys, I promise you I'll be standing in line waiting to talk about that then. Until then, there's no point in it, guys, because there's nothing proven. And law enforcement has said over and over and over again that these people have nothing to do with this. Neither side. So, you know, let's, let's, we got to take that into account. I'm just saying, and refocus again on finding this child. So, uh, I'm going to put something else up here real quick that was sent to me for us to check out. And it, it, it's in regards to the investigation as well. And then we're going to go ahead and open so things up, did did and open things up to talk about that. So this, in my under, from my understanding is a conversation between uh, Chris Proudfoot and the March Divers, uh, and it, it says it gives it more insight about Sebastian's movements that night, which is something that's stuff we need to talk about, okay, to help us to understand once again what could have happened. Yes, absolutely, Holly, and welcome. Thank you for joining us, Norma Fralin. Good to have you here tonight, today as well. Oh, it's almost night. Either way, welcome everybody. Andy Rose, uh, I think I spoke to you earlier, but welcome to all of you guys that have just joined us. And welcome to everybody that's just listening, not in chat. I appreciate you guys for supporting this very much. So let's see what this is all about, guys. That's 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 a good point, Clue. I understand. I do understand. It's hard. It's hard. It is hard. Believe me, there's things I feel and think myself, but I'm trying to steer clear of those thoughts so that I can focus on what happened to him and how we could figure out how to get him back home. Or did, I, didn't, I didn't know what, who she actually worked for, so. Yeah, well. There's a lot of BS out there that say there's no dogs in. That's what. And that's what I heard. And then I read it. I read the article from the actual news. You guys have headphones. It might help. This the, the audio on this is very rough. It's hard to hear. It's not very loud. So let's try to uh, try to hone in on what's being said. It's, it's kind of clouded. Um, so let's let's see. Let me start it again one more time. All right, here we go. <laughs> Or didn't I didn't know what who she actually worked for, so yeah, well, there's a lot of BS out there that people say there's no dogs in. That's what and that's what I heard, and then I read it I read the article from the actual news and it said that they the dog got a scent a scent that they uh, from an article clothing or something. And then they tracked all the way here, like several times. Well, you, 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 you have better. There was a dispatcher the, the call got released from the dispatchers to the deputies and the responding units in that uh, release of information you can clearly hear the dispatcher and the cops all say the dog's got to send this over here in this call okay and i mean for people to say no it's
for those of you that can't clearly hear this, what this is about is when the audio that we have been reviewing multiple times to try to figure it out. This is Chris talking to one of the guys from Narc Divers, okay, about that audio that was released from dispatch through the deputies that day. We were listening to it and we'll listen to it again as many times as we need to, but try to hear it. Pay attention to this if you can. Like I said, it, there's some wind in the background and it's just a little bit hard to hear. So headphones, if you got them, turn it up as loud as you can. Yeah, and that's what and that's, that's what everybody kept saying. And I'm like, there's got to be some truth to this because that doesn't make any sense. Like, so yeah, they tracked tracked here. So yeah, and then like I said, the path that they tracked. So our situation is here in that subdivision. Yeah, I'm directly the next subdivision over to the left is our subdivision. Okay. It's called Victoria Place. Okay. The set that they got. As soon as you turn in our subdivision, you're on Kelly. Drive it all the way up to the very top of the hill at a four way. You'll see that to the right, they're cutting in the new road that will link all this together. Okay. Yeah. Listen, I see you guys in chat. Calm down. <laughs> Settle down, kids. Let's listen to this. It, it's kind of important. So, is that what he's talking about directly right there? Oh. Do you know how like how much they actually drain? They drain the whole thing. It's okay. So initially when it, when, it, when they went over to look at it, it was only knee deep. Uh, from the picture that you showed me, there's a lot of new runoff. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. trying to figure out. I was like, I don't know how shallow it was before or after. Yeah. I'm, I'm five foot nine, and it was knee deep. Okay. <laughs> so, and they, and they even drain it and still walked it. Okay, so they actually walked it. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and that is actually information that was told to me by law enforcement. Yeah, so they actually... Because I went on a... Me and law enforcement think it was me in a vehicle. Right. Drove through around and showed, showed me a bunch of stuff. I'm the only one that they've done that. Okay. So I, I can actually give you a little bit more information than what everybody's out there running their mouth. Yeah. No, I'm not going public with it. No. Quite honestly. I'm tired of the BS and the rumors. That's what I, I kept trying to tell everybody. I was like, it's, you know, the kid, anyway, I said he left the house and then the internet went crazy with rumors and speculation. And I was like, I don't go off of rumors. I go off of what we got now. And I said something about that pond. And I said, and it just stopped. I said, so that's where I want to go. That's where I want to search and try to figure this out. So, then, so to work backwards from the pond, okay, if you were to, Walk from the pond, go straight up into the construction site. You'll see where they cut the road and it turns left. If you walk that all the way back, run to our subdivision. Okay. If you go down Kelly, all the way down to Stafford, and walk down towards Stafford and toward our house. From our house, I'm gonna, if you're looking at my house, I'm going to tell you where the dog stand went. They started on the front porch. Okay. Because off the front porch, the dog cut to the right. They go all the way down the side of the house along the fence. So they went to the back side. Or the back that right. to the north. To, if you're looking if you're looking at my house, okay. it's gonna be the right hand side. The dog goes all the way down the fence. The dog comes all the way back up into the yard. And then it cuts diagonally to the house next door to us through their back yard. And that and that is the direction which the dogs take. After that, that's where they get over to the main road, go up Kellen, and head over to uh, the other subdivision. Okay. I know I mean, they've had dogs. I can't, I mean. How many? Yeah, a lot of dogs. But day one, there was five dogs. There was a Belgian Melanois, uh, a, blue, a blue healer, two bloodhounds, and a blue pig. 
I know with good dogs, like they'll do the track that's on the ground, and then if they smell a stronger scent in the air that's closer, they'll go to that direct scent. So if all the dogs were tracking actually on the ground, then you know, I feel like this is a new good play, like the spot to figure it out. Because if it would have if it would have cross track, like actually like headed back, they should have been able to pick up on it. Like a, a good dog. So, in the eight days of the, the very intense surgery, in the eight days, on day one, the five dogs did that. Out of the eight days, three, of three different dogs of three different groups, um, went to that same area in that same set. On day one, two of those dogs did the same path. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that was the Bloodhound and, a, and the Blue Tooth. And it's probably a better dog. Yeah, those two were probably yeah. the better ones. Now, the guy, I mean, I can't remember this guy. I called him Michael, but I think his, they call him Michelle. Okay. He's French. Uh, he's out of North Carolina, I believe. And he, he, he trains. He teaches, the, yeah, he trains trainers or panda handlers. Yes. They brought his dogs out, and one of his dogs did that same path. From what I was told, that's, that's why I was like, well, Thank you, Zelda, and thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you. Right. And then we're, we're to the strongest pack, yeah. The strongest, the strongest, most recent set. And there was a couple dogs, like one dog uh, went over to the long hole pipe and got there and he lost the scent. Uh, the rest of the dogs all picked up scent, but then they go in all different directions and they lose. Well, thank. I appreciate your information, and I'm gonna to try to figure this out and keep on, just keep on working at it. If I get anything, I'll let you know. Yeah, the uh, that guy I sent you uh, info, Ken Wagner. Okay. Uh, he's the EMA director for some of the town. Uh, he was the one I guess that was doing. He was responsible for the ground searching and the waterways and caves and everything. Okay. Uh, he can yeah, reach out to him and he can give you more really? details. As far as like the water, what's been covered? Yeah, in the caves and stuff. He, he'll probably even show you, maybe. I don't know, but I would reach out to him and he will give you the best uh, physical aspect of the surgery that took place. He's the one that was in charge of it. Okay. I can do that. All right, man. All right, if I, you need some, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call. Buddy, and, uh, okay. All right, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye. All right, so there's that too, okay? And I, I've had issue with that from the moment. Uh, there's a link pinned in the chat. Anybody that would like to join me, let's do this. And then uh, we'll get that rolling. Looks like Tracy, did you get, the more, get more memberships or are those the same ones? Nope, they're the same ones. Again, thank you for that, Tracy, Baba Yaga. What's up, buddy? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? How are you been? I'm surviving. I'm surviving. It's been a minute since I've been up on uh, your panel, man. Yes, it has. I don't really come up. Like, I don't really go on. Maybe 10%, 20% of what I used to go on YouTube as far as, like, looking into crime and shit, man. I don't know what happened. Uh, I get uh, it. I get it. I'm, be, I'm, I think, I think, I'm getting an I'm echo. Getting an echo. From, from me? Yeah. Yeah. No shit. I'm on a phone. That's weird. Uh, Hold on. That's all right. Um, I turned myself down. Maybe it was me. Um, um, am I good? No, it's still no, doing it's still doing it. Oh shit. Um, um, yeah, I'm just hearing myself come back through you somehow. Not now. You muted it. Okay. Um, um, there it is. There it is again. All right. Let me uh, let me drop down. I'll be back. Right. Let me try. Let me try some. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, cause okay, you there? Before. Hello? Hello? I don't hear it now, so I, I, can, I hit your echo cancellation in the background. We're good, okay? Oh, okay, cool. All right, welcome, JC. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, hey, guys. What do, you, uh, what do you think, uh, or do you have any thoughts on this, Willie? I don't know if you were following this at all. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, I, I got in late to uh, I think he's live there tonight where they were talking about it. Um, 
you know, because I haven't really followed it too closely. But I mean, just hearing the gist of it and, you know, how old he is, how he left, um, his mental uh, capacity, um, you know, the stories, how stories are changing. In my opinion, I think, you know, something, I think somebody placed him somewhere. That's why it's been so hard to find him. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I think a 15 year old wandering off, if they truly did get into some trouble, wouldn't have gone far, uh, especially with no shoes. And I don't know where the conditions great when he left. Um, well, I mean, it's Tennessee and it, it had been raining at some point, but mm-hmm. know, it's not like super cold. It wasn't super cold that night or that morning. Yeah. But now, but now they didn't say he brought, you know, a canteen with him. He didn't bring a huge jug of water with him. So, you know, unless somebody is harboring him or, you know, obviously kidnapped him and is giving him, you know, nutritional stuff that you need, in my opinion, unfortunately, I don't think he's, you know, with us anymore. And now it's more of a, you know, find him rather than, you know, where is he alive? Um, Like, I don't want to think like that because the only, the only way that that's possible is if somebody is literally holding him hostage right now. So I, I don't know. That's, that's my take on it is like, you know, something, somebody placed him somewhere. I don't know who I'm not going to point fingers. Cause again, I don't know all those details, but I just think, I just think somebody is a part of it. Just hearing, you know, the details so far. No, I, you, I agree. I agree. Go ahead, JC. Um, well, I just, you know, like I said in the chat, like I just started like thinking about, I just know that <clears throat> the case that, you know, um, we have out here of the guy that just vanished and, you know, we know that he walked off, but he mm-hmm. just vanished and he's never been found since. Um, and you're in Nebraska, uh, Nebraska, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Chance Engelbert. Um, he, he, you know, he just, you know, walked off the grid or whatever, and has never been found. And it was like in twenty nineteen, maybe or twenty one. I can't. It was a few years ago, by now. And I was just saying, like, you know, like I was saying in chat. Can you imagine how frustrated law enforcement is? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. Like, put it from their perspective. Like they're the ones actually out there doing it, doing the thing and coming up with little evidence, you know, um, unable to find what, you know, and just so frustrating that there's and, such lack And they've of- done the whole thermal, like they've done the whole thermal searches and stuff. They've done everything. They've been. They've used all that. I showed it uh, a couple of weeks back, maybe I think. Uh, military grade, uh, like uh, radar or not radar, but like um, I keep wanting to say sonar. It's not sonar, like X-ray yeah. type stuff. The same stuff they used when they were looking for Bin Laden and Hussein and stuff like that. Well, I remember what they used on this guy, the guy here in uh, PA, the um, guy who escaped the jail, and yeah. they, you know, they could. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess my question is, you know, the, the guy that you're speaking of that, you know, went off of the grid and then disappeared. He obviously at least put his shoes on. Correct. Yeah. But one thing, here's the thing, Willie, I don't know if you knew this or not. Well, no, I'm just, did. I'm just wondering if he went out there prepared or if he literally just walked, you know, off the grid. Like, I, because to me, that's a big difference. Like if you go out there, you know, with some, with some shit, and then you eventually run out and you just can't live off the land and then you pass away. Right, um, right. So um, Sebastian was, it is autistic and he's not like, uh, like my son, Caden is autistic. You've seen him. So on and so forth. he's not as well to do as Caden is, as far as what his, what he can understand and what he, his reaction to things and this and that. And I, I feel, here's my opinion real quick. Um, to throw this in there so so you guys can get a different picture possibly i salty made a couple comments in chat and i kind of agree with her on them i think something triggered him to bolt that's why he was barefoot okay uh he wasn't thinking about the let's hurry up stop put my shoes on wash my face and hands put on some cologne type thing and that was a joke i'm just saying but that would mean out. something but, but but that would mean something arose in the household correct like an argument oh. or something 
it could be, but it also could be from my understanding, and we're going to do a show on autistic, uh, autism and autistic variations here soon. It could have been something that happened that day or yesterday. That something it just it clicks, okay, and it yeah. causes a trigger. It's a thought, and when that okay. happens, it could have been a uh, like a, a loud noise. It could have been a sensory yeah. projected type scenario. Any of those things. It could have been some something days before, and it mm -hmm. just it hit him at that moment, and boom. Or yeah. yes, it could have been something that happened right there. You know yeah, because I mean? that was my first question when I heard about this case was, you know, did did something trigger him that day or the day before or whatever that you know he yes. took off? Because like you said, like that would make that would make sense. But then a lot of people are saying that they haven't come forward with any kind of story of anything you know ad unusual that occurred right. for him to right. And it, like Stoddy said, he could have looked out the window and saw a cat. He loves cats. And said, mm -hmm. "Oh my God, I want to touch that cat and run out the door." And then got lost. Or, or, which is what I think this is. I think he got out of that house somehow. And this is one of my big theories. And it was a what I what somebody else had called, and I've taken it upon myself to use it. Mm -hmm. Time of opportunity. Um, yep. Somebody yep. Sebastian being outdoors at the wrong time and the wrong person's there, and somebody that's and not a person grabbed him. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. Out. Yes, ma'am. I don't think that he was thinking long term. Of course not. No. Oh. No. Oh, especially if he didn't bring his shoes. That's what I mean. Like e either he, you know, it was something where he was gonna go do something quick and come back, or you know, somebody took him. Well, he was. He had to put this flashlight, according to his parents. You know, what if he so was far. standing by his window, and and saw a cat run through the backyard, and he's holding this little flashlight through the glass That's tell me why what doesn't he have a like because i heard he had a phone is it a flip phone or is it a smartphone with a flashlight it's a smartphone that was left in the house he didn't take it with yeah, him his phone was left in his house so that's yeah and because when somebody said oh he, he took a little flashlight but he left his phone like his oh, phone yeah. had oh, a flashlight yeah. but then you're saying he's autistic so you know i don't know if he again it, it's it, without understanding his mental capacity of what he's able to like comprehend and not comprehend, I think plays a big part in this. A hundred percent, which is why a couple a week ago we, you know, we said we need to know who Sebastian is. We need to know. We had to learn that, you know, it was stated, and I hate using this term, and I'm sorry again, Gray, that he was a high functioning autistic child. Well, we now know that high functioning is a bad term because Sebastian also is also the same type of a child that would bite himself, hit himself throw himself on the ground if he is triggered or something pushed him to that moment. So, you know, there's a thud that was heard by his mother. And then the next thing we know, we're at this point now. So I, I have a feeling that that thud could have had something to do with this, whether it was him going out a window, him shutting a door, him doing something, okay? And something triggered him in that aspect to do what he did. Dang, no. is, yes, there, is there like that 17 year old in Alaska. Do we know anything else about that? Like, was he thinking long term leaving or was he thinking he was about to meet somebody? So, I have no other um, info on that other than the fact that he was 17 and disappeared without his shoes again. But they found him. And I'd like to get a follow up on that if I could find one. I've actually looked and I can't find it. Anywhere. Well, I, I had a question of like, did he meet, did he possibly meet somebody like on the internet that came and, and picked him up? You well, know? That's, that's also been a theory. Yeah, that's part of it, though. That's part of the problem because we've been told by both sides of the families that he didn't have any access to that, which I've, I've called and not against the families, but I've called bullshit on from day one because. Neither did my child, but he figured it out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So it, it's just one of them things that you, plus he goes to public schools. He interacts with other kids that could show him things. He mm -hmm. he doesn't have a lot of friends, but that doesn't mean but there's he, no. But he probably wouldn't. Have, I mean, yeah, but at 15, I don't think he would have the capability to be able to hide that digital evidence. So. Oh, um. No, yeah. I can agree with that. If his parents were paying attention and looking at his devices, sure. You're right. I agree. Yeah. So I figure, like, if that was the case, that they would have came out with that already because, you know, they would have already been through his phone. So I guess they did. Just yeah, talking to talk. <laughs> yeah, they've gone through the home multiple times. They've checked his phone. They've looked at like game systems. They've looked at computers. They've looked at everything. Um, but what Mind of Monsters just said right here, grooming is real. 
It absolutely is real. It oh, could absolutely. have been anybody. Absolutely. Anybody. Okay. Well, the reason I think some somebody is involved, and I don't think – I mean, I'm still sticking with my first story as far as, like, somebody – within the home or around the home or came to the home is involved because, you know, if he just went off and wandered off and he didn't have a specific route to go to not hit cameras and not hit, you know, certain locations that might have cameras, you know, wouldn't you think there's at least some kind of video of him somewhere if he was wandering? Like, I know it's, it's woods out there, but there's a lot of houses out there. And I heard clue say that a lot of them have cameras. So where's, where's the video of him wandering? There's 12, like on Kellen, right, which is the street you turn on Mm. to get onto their street, there are literally like 12 cameras. And what's funny is the path that we heard Chris say in that call Mm -hmm. that he shot diagonally across, right? Right. Through the neighbor's yard. Right. So it's almost like... Maybe I could see it happening where the cameras didn't pick up. Because I will say this much, right? That a lot of these ring cams that are there, they're in like the alcoves. And aren't they motion activated? Well, you can get both, right? Like you okay. can get, you can buy them to where they, if a motion happens, it kicks on or it records all the time. But being that they're in the alcoves, there's only like, Typically, there's a 180-degree view with a camera. In an alcove, I think you cut that to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. You could possibly, right? And one thing that Katie did say about him was that he, and she said it more than once, that he is very good at slithering around and sneaking, and he likes to hide and things like that. So I'm not saying that he was hiding from cameras, because I I highly doubt he knew exactly where they were. Yeah. Yeah. But, That's what I mean. Like I can't, you know, like I can't hear that he's autistic, and then he also knew, you know, how to plan routes and shit like that. Like that doesn't right. go hand in hand. Now, don't get it wrong, though. They are very smart. But the thing is, is that this could but, just be the luck yeah. of the draw that he just very. Yeah, lucky. but isn't and I, and and like I said, correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know like what side has that ability. But like I don't know if it's if it's the autistic uh, or the Down syndrome um, that has the ability to like you know, be very proficient in one certain thing, like numbers or, I don't know, the planets or something? Both. Both. Okay. From my understanding, both. Um, Because what happens in a lot of cases is autistic children and even children that have Down syndrome, my wife is one of her best friends has a daughter that's Down syndrome. They may be deficient in some things, but Mm -hmm. in other things, they will be very, very, very high functional in, okay? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, it's just one of those things, guys. We don't know which. But level. from what I heard, they're also very like, 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 like with with the Down syndrome side, they're more like, um, I'm not gonna say outgoing, but like more upbeat and not like so much afraid and sketched out like like an autistic child, like because oh, well, they have to like kind of like get to know you a little bit and like. Well, see, that's, like standoffish, that's, and maybe that's, so that's why maybe he wouldn't run up to a house right away to get help. That's somewhat of a misconception in some ways. Autistic children, in a lot of ways, especially. Yeah, see, children, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I don't no, mean to okay. like offend anybody. Or no, 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 you're okay. Like uh, Sebastian made a comment that one thing he wanted for Christmas was friends. Okay, mm. well, that's why I said it's somewhat of a misconception. It's not wholeheartedly wrong. Somewhat, and what it is is that they want be heard to be seen they need to be heard and need to be seen in some senses autistic children i'm speaking of um Mm -hmm. and so therefore they are in in a lot of ways outgoing very outgoing and want to make friends with you okay caden was that way a lot a whole lot and was i don't even want to get into it because it's going to break me down again so anyway with that being said people will treat them because they are so outgoing to an extent as if they're strange okay and therefore it, that can be a trigger in some ways too. I've seen it happen. So he could be be somebody that would go to um, anybody and say hi to him to talk to him, so on and so forth. Now, as far as going to a house, mm-hmm. they get, I don't know because I don't know how he, what the situation was in his mind at that moment for what he was doing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so it could be either one of the two. I don't know, but uh, welcome yeah. all. Way I'm sorry. Look, I just you know I, I understand there's so many possibilities, but again, if you 
lay out everything, you know, it, it, can, it can't be certain things because of, you know, some of the shit we know already. So, you know, in my opinion, it can only be like three things. And I think, you know, we're going to find out a lot in the next week or two. Something's um, going to come out. Hopefully we find something out um, uh, soon is what I can say. Welcome, Brian. Welcome, Golf. Thank you. It's hard, guys. Hi, it's Brian. nice to be here. Am I here? Is How it working? Feeling, willy, willy, willy. I miss you, my friend. You too, man. How you been? You need to, you need to, oh, it's been a, it's, it's been a really rough haul, dude. It's like, yeah, it's like yeah, getting old in like a month. I mean, I've got a chair to go down the stairs. I can't walk. I need Jesus. a walker. You and, sound better, though. You definitely sound better. Oh, yeah. you know, I'm working on them. I just, I think I just have to accept that this is permanent. I hope that's not true. I just started a new med, but it has really been really like just absolutely awful. You know, like, shit, well, you sound, I'm not going to lie, dude. You sound like fluent as shit. Like you sound, you know, I don't know. You just sound better. Thank you. You do. You, do definitely. It's neat, you know, it's neat. To, it's neat to be here. It's very isolating, though, okay? Like, getting down the steps, and then you need the walker. I mean, and it's embarrassing. I mean, it's just it's just bizarre. Listen, and, Brian, don't don't ever... Um, this is just... Not that it means anything, give me giving advice, but don't be embarrassed. You put your time in. You've done your part, and, mm -hmm. uh, and you've done a lot for, for society in itself. So just... That's good, true. It is what it is, what it is right at this moment. It doesn't mean it's permanent, and... Things right, will get better, my friend. No, I that's what I'm hoping is I just got yeah. new meds yesterday. But you guys, I really I'm sorry, but I really want to talk to you all about Caleb because there's really neat, interesting stuff. How oh many, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna get into that too, I promise. How many of you are seriously following it? Because I have been following it. Are you guys like aware this one? Of, Caleb um, Harris. Caleb Harris. Oh, is it really? different case? Oh, it, but Willie, it is absolutely messed up. Hi, Clue. It is awful. I mean, this kid just vanished off the face of the earth. Brian, and if I look into one more case, I'm going to jump off a cliff, dude. <laughs> this is really good. No, Willie, really, really do it. Caleb, see? Oh, I should write it. Do it. It's incredible. I am yeah, put it in chat now, screenshot, or back chat for me. And all. It's, it's Wait, definitely no. interesting, Willie. We covered a lot of it yesterday, mm -hmm. and broke it down it, it, it's another one that just doesn't make sense he he was there and then he was gone and that's it is like, this the, is this the one is this the one in pa again no this is yeah. in um Texas. florida Texas. oh okay because i saw okay. corpus you guys, what i need to know from you all you all know i'm old and you know i'm not good with the internet stuff does reddit have a hookup thing can you get sex on reddit I have that. I have that whole Reddit thing. I was gonna pull up for us to look at today. Okay, um, but you guys, what? I'm asking you guys. I'm asking you. Does Reddit do hooking up? Because Gray Hughes is doing all this stuff with that. <laughs> he was meeting a man and went to a park for sex. Now you guys know I'm gay. We yeah. do parks. Okay, really? we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> I mean, any city you go to, you can look in a guidebook. And it'll give you all the parks, and it'll describe it. Young men, good men, cops are there. I mean, it's a big deal. So he was apparently, so apparently, I'm trying to ask you guys, have you ever heard of Reddit being used? Like, what is your, our, our gay shit is what? The gay one, but what is yours, the straight one? Never heard of it. I haven't been in the dating world in, in 20 Craigslist? years. Craigslist? I don't have Reddit. Oh. No, but I'm asking you: Does Reddit do hooking up? Oh, of course, yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure you can, you know, make a post and say, "Hey, I'm looking for a, you know, cute little four foot ten, you know, Spanish guy or something." If you know. wanted to. No, it says stuff like that. It says, "Looking for sex with anybody? You want to suck?" I mean, it's. Are it's you talking about Craigslist? No, he's talking no. about Reddit. Reddit. And I thought Reddit, you have to, like, end. post a question. No, no that's what I'm asking you guys. Does Reddit do sex hookups? Because I've never heard of that, but I'm old and I don't do all that stuff. 
I mean, I it was it, it, it was a sex hookup, and it was right by his house, and he did go to the park allegedly. And the park, I looked up to try to find out if it is because he, in his thing, he said he doesn't care whether it's a dude or a woman. So there we go, guys. I'm thinking bye. I've and never heard. I've never heard of it, but I mean, anything is possible. I have the Reddit stuff here that I figured. Oh, we could bring it up. I would love to hear what you all think. Golf, what do you think? I think yes. <laughs> I mean, so do I. And then yeah. I feel like, no, this is bullshit. Okay, this is like someone's making this up. Okay, but then it's just too right for the whole mess because I do think he would not be able to come out to the parents. The parents are super strange, guys. They're super religious. They are absolutely clueless about their kid being missing. I mean, it, it, the father is bizarre. But the thing is, they're really super religious, like super. So then when all this Reddit stuff started, I'm thinking maybe it could be. Well, if, if, be. If, if the, first of all, I, I agree with you in some senses, because if the family's very religious and he's not comfortable going to his parents and saying, hey. Yes, that's what I'm getting. Help, um, then it could have been kept a secret, which in turn they would nobody would know about this. Okay, so oh, dad, dad has this absolutely ridiculous notion about this kid. This kid is twenty one. Okay, he's twenty one and he's running around the earth at three o'clock in the morning. Okay, it's just weird, y'all. I wish y'all would look it up. Yeah, it's it's definitely something that I could say is is a possibility, but you know I don't know wholeheartedly. It was good, uh, Diego. Good. Uh, draw. I want you guys to see this. I want you guys to see this. What do you guys tell me? Is there a is park? Like, near yes, there's that a bridge? huge. Yes, there's a huge park right near his house. That's where the um phone went. Was to the park. The park is right all along the water. This kid loves so, the water. I, okay, so, hold on, Brian. So last last night, Clue, and for the rest of you that were in here, do you remember when we were talking about the one uh, signal being picked up? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we are. Okay, if this yep. is where that this is where that park would be, you guys. But can you yep. read it? Yeah, I'm gonna read it because I'm okay. I'm, let me see if I can the park, the clue the park is right near his house, and that's where the phone went, and it's just unreal. And I kind of think he <laughs> might have hooked up accidentally with a homophobe who killed him, or somebody okay. that was trying to possibly ah. get, set him up like that, which is very possible. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. No, guys, oh, let me yeah, just tell but... you something. We love parks. I'm sorry, you guys think that's it's not. It's a big part so, of our life. I did the parks for years. I loved the parks. Okay. That is actually really true because I had a friend of mine and his dad actually put something or answered an ad on like Craigslist or something. Mm -hmm. And the girl got there. She came inside and there were two dudes waiting in her car. Yes. Yep. Yes, and they tied him up with like telephone cord. They beat the living oh, not it, out of no, him. It's and scary. The crap out of him. Yep. Yeah, that's why you gotta be careful on the internet. Oh, clue, clue, it's watch. Dago, will you read this to them? I want yeah. them to tell me. No, it's no, no. unreal clue. Okay, I'm I'll be going quiet. to. I'm going to welcome Mind Thank and Monsters. You. Thank you for joining us, Mind and Monsters, again. I appreciate you very much. Hey, Doggo, I just jumped up because I didn't know if you saw my chat. If you go into that Reddit, be very careful. Do not open any images on your live. No, 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 I'm not. I, okay. I, I know. I already know. Uh, believe me. Hey, so golf, so golf, you, do man. you I think that think this so. is real? Do you think this Reddit post is real? Um, Golf. I, I don't know about the Reddit post. I'm not familiar with the case enough to say that. But oh. knowing Reddit, that they have a lot of weird stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I, I'm 99% sure that these things happen on Reddit. If they can happen on Craigslist. Okay. You know, yeah. if somebody can say, listen, I'm looking to eat someone on, yes, on okay. Craigslist, then that's going to happen on Reddit as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this right, could guys. be true. Okay. Yeah. I need to shut up, Dago. Okay. You guys listen to this. 
Okay, so I shut it, up now, Dago. <laughs> in a YouTube video, a creator discussed a possible new lead. It speculated that Caleb had a secret Reddit account where he secretly asked for quick hookups with strangers, both men and women. It's allegedly identified as his account by the info in his posts and a bracelet that he always wore that was visible in a picture on the account. Going yep. by the last post, an hour before he went missing, it's thought that he may have had a secret meetup with somebody that had ill intentions. It's speculated that he wouldn't have wanted to be picked up at home and wouldn't have told his friends because of the shame stigma. We know we just talked about that. So he may have been picked up by car near the foggy bridge and shut off his phone so nobody would discover his location. Again, all true. Um, him being barefoot was explained by his dad saying he used to he was used to walking around barefoot all the time as a fisherman. His dad also confirmed that law enforcement knew about this account. P.S. Hookups are nothing to shame people for, and Caleb is not responsible for any actions of others uh, that may have led to his disappearance. I'm going to say one thing before we go any further with this. That I wholeheartedly agree with. I do not want to catch anybody in here shaming this guy because of what he possibly could have been involved with. This is people's lifestyle, and I need to respect that as much as we do anybody else's lifestyles. So I'm asking everybody to respect it the same way. If we could, please. Thank you. Okay, so over to the right here. Let me read this real quick. 21-year-old uh, Texas A&M student, uh, you, sorry, University Corpus Christi student, Caleb Harris was last seen in the morning hours, March 4th, near his apartment in the 1900 block of Annis Jocelyn Road. His family reported him missing after his roommates were unable to locate him the next day. He is described as being 5'11 and weighing 180 pounds. He has brown hair brown eyes, and anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to contact CCPD at 361. Well, we don't need the number. But anyway, now again, understand something, folks. This is something that I knew about. We didn't get into it yesterday. And it is something that is very, very, very based on what we looked at when we mapped this out, set his locations yesterday, talked about all this. This is very, very, very plausible to me. Um, people are ignorant. People will sit up people, somebody that is, as say, for instance, it was a guy uh, that he was trying to meet, okay? There are people that are homophobic that want to hurt people that aren't, okay? That are homosexual, they want to go after them. Otherwise, again, it could just be somebody that, if he was looking for a girl that just wants to, there's evil people out there, folks, that wants to just hurt somebody in general. So understand that while we're looking at it. So. Well, anybody can, I mean, like I said, anybody can set up a fake profile and bring a couple people Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You ain't lying, brother. I've seen it happen hundreds of times. So, yeah. I've had the pleasure of working in Corpus Christi. And I can tell you from experience that you're in the middle of the Bible Belt. So it's a very religious area. And those religious people, listen, nothing, I'm not down on anyone by any means. But those religious people get it in their minds that they're doing something for God by taking these people out. Okay? Yeah. Yep. That's not the way life works, folks. We know that. We all agree on that. But some of these people, they just don't get it. Okay? Yeah, like Scientologists. Mm, that, no comment, but yeah, okay. I mean, no it, comment. I mean, like, is it really like you're trying to say, I'm not, I'm really not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to dumb it down for myself. So you're basically trying to say that these people are like a gay Batman? Anti-gay Batman? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. What? So they send out, what if they see somebody send out a, a bat signal, they're going to be like, oh, nope. Stamping that out. You, you, is that what you mean? What it, what it mean, what I'm saying is like somebody will put a false ad in there to say that, to have somebody respond to it as say a gay interaction, right? Right. They're, yeah. not, they're not gay at all. They want that person to show up so they can beat the living shit out of them or do yeah. work. That's what yeah. it, ha it happens all the time, Clue. All the time. Yeah, so that's what I meant. Like, yeah, I know. I, that's what I figured. Right, gay vigilantes. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, Michelle. there you go. Dago, where did you get this? Because this isn't even the one I'm talking about. Um, where did you get this one? This is a totally different one than I was t talking about. Our the one I'm talking about is like it says, you know, looking for a man or a woman. Don't care. Let's suck. I mean, I'll meet you there <laughs> at the park. Okay, I mean, he, you don't have to, go, you don't have to go into you don't have to go into details, buddy. Um, draw. <laughs> oh God, Dago, stop now. 
draw draw sent this to me last night. So. No, we need details. Well, <laughs> no, this isn't clue. This isn't even the post I was talking about, my dear. Clue, this wow. Is a family show. Oh, this one here gives a little more insight into some of the other things involved in it. This is a um, family show. <laughs> uh, right. So it says here, this is uh, this subreddit is for informational dialogue and civil discussion. Please report any content. That violates our subreddit rules, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so it says um, down here towards the bottom, it says this is from two days before. Yes, it's been known yes. for a while now. I think it's the M4A. He would have been embarrassed about it. I could be wrong, but it seems like he comes from a very Christian family. This is yes. the thing that makes yes. the most sense yes. so far. And his food from DoorDash was all packaged that could stay out a bit, so it checks out. Poor kid. I hope yes. Reddit helps them. Uh, someone in that Reddit community oh might well have some crucial information, like a previous sketchy run with the perpetrator. Ellie needs to make this information public. Embarrassment oh. should be the least of their worries if it could create some leads. I agree with that. Wow. Uh, the person that replied to this last post wow. deleted their account. Okay, here we go. Oh, God. Okay, so the person that replied to this last post deleted their account, and it appeared wow. the same person replied to other posts he made. Hopefully, Reddit can track who that person is for investigation. Absolutely. Man, now, wow. Wow. And uh, now that it's national coverage that they have large <laughs> outlets involved, uh, but also oh, members of the church can probably receive donations based on their Christianity. Christianity, sorry. And from many other Christians, I don't think they will ever do that. I'm a Christian myself, but many of the traditional Christians don't even believe this is anything but a rumor. Uh, how would they take finding out more? They would judge him so harshly and not be as kind or helpful as yeah. uh, you won't want. You don't want anyone to stop being helpful or think your child negatively. That's true. I get it. Okay. Uh, on down, on down, on down. I wish they would give more information, but I understand, and I know why they're not. Okay, we all know uh, why they they're might not, not have a lot more information either. Well, it's not even that. Going That's like right along with, with uh, Sebastian's case and any other case we've looked at. Yes, all of them. If they do have any more information and they put it out, they could spook somebody else into taking off. If that's the case, and we don't, they don't want that. So that's yeah. that. Um, one second here. You all need to see. You all need to watch the parents. The parents are absolutely so bizarre. They are just watch the video of the parents. They are absolutely out to lunch. It I've is seen, just bizarre. I've seen a couple of interviews with them. I think. Yeah, don't you think they're just really off? the The affect is totally not there. My they're brain very, is missing. Right. No, I get it. Um, I, I it's don't just know. weird. I mean, I don't. You know, I have faith he'll come back, dude. Calm. Faith doesn't help. Your kid is gone. This isn't about faith. Something bad is going on here. <laughs> okay, All right. Go on, Diggle. So, um, back to where, 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 uh, with how okay, quiet they are saying, the agencies now involved, one hundred percent believe this is a serial killer situation. That they are just building a case and gathering evidence so that when they arrest the suspect, they'll have enough to file charges. Okay, so. One thing I want to wait, say. wait, Dago, that fits with what dad's last interview was. Dad said on his last interview, this was like five days ago, that there is something really big and breaking. And he absolutely flat out said that he, he knows about it, but he can't talk about it. But there's a big lead. Okay. I shut up now just because that post reminds me. It's okay. I shut up. It's okay. Um, <laughs> because whoever knew, whoever did this knew exactly what they were doing hence there being no sign of struggle no witness um um uh how did they know how do you know there are no people of interest why are people so confident in their opinions when they almost certainly only have a fraction of the facts now what i would like to do if i can i i can do it is look into any other situations that have gone down in the Corpus Christi area, possibly, that mimic this, okay? If somebody has been repeatedly possibly putting up the situations in Reddit, I want to know how many people responded and how many. There was, there was one guy about two years ago in Corpus Christi that did end up dead. 
But to me, when I found that out, because I was looking for the park, I wanted to see if the park was described as gay. It did, yeah. it wasn't. Okay. Okay. But there was another dude that did do this, and the connection was that the dad said that the other guy was really into fishing and water too. Okay. So then when I'm looking at the park, the park is totally him. The park is right on this huge bay. Like it was just creepy. And there is a little hut out there with tables and stuff. Um, keep like going, a privacy you know. area, right. No, it would be absolutely a place where you would go. <laughs> what can I tell you, Willie? <laughs> right, I got you. Welcome, Cammy. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so, and, and like that's what I'm saying is if I I would hope that law enforcement is looking at other leads that match this description because that's what they do over a period of you know any time, honestly, to see if they if they can define whoever did that and match it up to that person. That, in my opinion, would be a number one suspect to be, to be looking at period as far as i'm concerned so um like this one says whoever did it knew exactly what they were doing that's that's a big I, statement right there, i agree with that and this is just infuriating me i'm sorry but what a miserable existence like yep. you just live to like yep. trap people who you don't think are living the right way like i feel Ooh. i hope the lord has a special place in hell for you personally i'm just saying it, it, it's been going on for a long time, Clue. It really has. It's sickening, sickening. I mean, my my wife's uncle is gay and has been his whole life, and he's sixty four years old, and he's gone through all of this multiple times where people have called. Oh, him. you guys have no idea what I've gone through. I mean, right. the cops have harassed me. I've been falsely arrested. A, a long history of of, of gay, and this is you know this is for this being is gay. A, Yes, yeah, yes, that's exactly. It's just like for people that were arrested and harassed for being black, Willie. It's the right, same. Been beat up, Willie. Well, I, thought, I, I mean, I, I thought the cops are like lenient, like with the with like the LGBTQ marches and stuff. No, when I watch them, no. uh, maybe now, maybe now, but not then. Well, I will say oh, that, but, but that's a very public too, like thing that's going on, like a march or a rally. But if you yes. just pull someone over and they're alone. You want to know something? I'm going to tell you guys something. My uncle's, my wife's uncle lives in Alabama. He drives back and forth from Alabama to Ohio mm -hmm. to visit us twice a year. And he no longer stops at rest stops because he has been stopped, yes. questioned, and yes. harassed for doing that yes. in the bathroom because he's yes. gay. Okay. It's mm. disgusting. It is disgusting. No. I'm sorry. They so would put, them, no, they they would put cops in the park bathrooms. And to me, I always caught them. And I always knew when they approached me, I could tell basically, honestly, by the haircut, okay? Their haircuts are not gay, <laughs> okay? And I always <laughs> ended it really quick because I didn't want to talk to them, okay? Because I could tell they were undercover and they were arresting a lot of people, okay? In in the, the, the yes. there's two parts here that were very active. Hey, it's a lot of fun. And it's like, there's no one around. Okay, we're not hurting anybody, but whatever. But I, Matt got busted in there. Okay, I never got busted. I knew I couldn't go to the bathroom. I would not go in the bathroom. Okay, I wouldn't. Um, and what they would do is go in and play with themselves. Okay, and then they would bust you. Okay, now Clue... That mm -hmm. would be like what would happen to you if some man dropped his pants, Willie? What would happen to you if some lady took off her top? I mean, that is totally no entrapping. Like, what would you? Yeah, think, Willie? Nice. So well, what though, would you think, Willie? Though, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, real quick. Go ahead. Okay, your uncle that doesn't stop at rest stops or, or nope. uh, gas stations because of the ex like I'm taking it because of the experiences that he's had. It's only yes. because he's never been somebody to go there for that, but he's been at it like three times. It's happened to him coming from there to here and once or twice coming from there yes. to here and once going back. But anyway, he stopped yes. to use the bathroom to take a break and smoke a cigarette because he doesn't smoke in his car. And every three of those times he has been stopped by a state highway patrol officer in yep. the rest area coming out of the bathroom the one time questioning him. Asking him, they blatantly asked yep. him if he was a homosexual, which is disgusting to me. Yeah, that's asked, illegal, isn't it? It, I, it is I, illegal. It, thank you. It is illegal. How, like, how and they have. 
how can they tell that he's gay? Like, no, they don't. They don't you? know that you are, but they suspect that you are because you're there. Is basically they you hate are. you and fuck with you. Sorry, guys. It's fun to them. I mean, they have parked their cars behind my car in the park where I couldn't leave. I mean, they uh-huh. just fuck around with you. And that's, and, that's and basically what it was. And he told me he just refuses to stop there now, that he'll yeah, stop at a restaurant stop. somewhere else. I would, go, I would go on the outside on the highway. Sorry, people. I'm not going And this man is 64 years old. To look at, I mean, you could never tell um, that he's as old as he is. He's, I, actually, that sounds horrible. He's not that old. I'm just saying. You couldn't tell he was 64. He doesn't. He looks like he's in his late. He probably looks like he's 30. It, well, not that quite that young, but still. No, I'm his age. So he and I had the same generational stuff 35 years ago with being in the parks. Yeah. It was the 70s. We were celebrating that we finally had a place to go. We had bars. We had clubs. We were finally getting a place to be who we are. Right. But law enforcement... Yep, this was unbelievable. And that is that's a fact right there that Angel just said. That's why so many people are afraid of their own sexuality because they're afraid of consequence, which is bullshit to me, and it makes me sick. So it, it should never be. Yeah, you know, P. Diddy. Yeah, well, that's a whole. No, thing. if you guys saw the parent, <laughs> one of the parents' interview, I'm telling you, I definitely get that Caleb could not go tell his father he was gay. Trust that's me. That's my thought. Watch too. him. He is. If he oh is, my that's god, what the my father is, is weird. No, so did he? Your, what was your question going to be, Clue? Earlier, I'm sorry. <laughs> Me? You started to say you said <laughs> no, she she said said Oh hell! Much talking as y'all have done, I don't remember that. I, I have a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the Reddit thing, is there any indication that there's that? Kay, we're talking about Caleb, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Is there any indication that he was gay or not? That has been put out there that I've seen. No. So yeah. this could not over Beyonce. This, what it was could, was in his post, he said he would either he's fine with either a woman or a man, which is bisexual. I'm There's, gonna yeah. I'm gonna jump in. That came okay. from Facebook. Facebook is trash. Oh, anything okay. you see in oh. anything you see in a missing group in Facebook, take it with a grain of salt. So well, it was posted on. Asking. Thank you. That's mine. It was posted monster. on yeah. Facebook. Wow! But is it is it his post? Like, do we that's, know? It, yes. it, it, clue, it was know. never confirmed that it was his. It was posted okay. for about ten minutes, and an admin snatched it down. Oh, okay. Good. That's good to know. I have it. Okay. I have it. Thank it's you. extremely graphic. I yes, put it, it in is. my Discord, and I warned everybody: don't go opening pictures. Yeah, right. Right. You don't want to see. It's, it's see. not worth your mental health to go opening pictures because. I, I'm not going to be the. I'm not going to lie. I did open pictures to look for materials that might have matched, mm-hmm. and there was nothing that matched in there. So that Reddit that post has not been confirmed to be his. People are hey, sick. That's awesome. People want that's their five minutes asking. of fame, and they'll post stuff like that. They'll Absolutely. they'll do anything they can to get their five minutes of fame. There right. are so it really could not be real. That's what I wanted to call in and ask. Like it really could be just total bullshit. One hundred percent. There are six guys yes. that meet the wow. same description with the same hobbies missing in Corpus Ooh. Christi right now. Damn. Wow. Well, that's a little bit. That's interesting. Thank How you. How come that. we haven't heard about the, them, Doggo? If you go to April first on oh. Arctic Fox's channel. Okay. The, yes, actually, the day it. before that, me, him, and Dutchie were on panel covering that's Caleb. It. We had okay. a local in chat oh, that what night. What is your channel? Shoot, I can't write. What is your channel? Hold on, Brian. I'll get it. One second. Let her finish real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, so, <laughs> I, I know I'm freaking out that someone has been following it with me. You know it. You've been following it, too. It's just hard. I shut I up. It. I'm taking it easy. I get it. I get it. Go ahead, mind. I'm sorry. So there's six guys that are around his age. All, hmm. With him total that are missing in Corpus Christi. The wow. the name of the video, like we did a live one night. Me, him, and Dutchie did a live about Caleb. We had a local in chat. And she gave us some really good information on Caleb. Like okay. the fact that the gate didn't work in the gated community. The cameras didn't work in the gated community. I mean, hmm. it just, it, it yes, gets stranger and stranger. It got really bad reviews. It got horrible reviews. It was what? like things don't work. Maintenance doesn't show up. Yeah, really bad. Which, which video was it again, uh, Mind of Monsters? I'm looking for the name of it. Oh, that would be great if you play it. It I was will. eight I days will. ago. 
Okay. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Does anybody know if that account has been used since the disappearance? Mm -hmm. No, it's not yeah. been posted on. Okay. No, that's not. Well, okay. <clears throat> um, but there's really nothing else that goes into more details in here on this post right here. It just says um, about the bracelet that he wears for I identification purposes. Uh, screenshots and photos have been shared for a couple weeks now. Does anyone know where the dad confirmed that Ellie knew about the account? Just things like that. So I will bring that video up. We can watch it. If it's definitely going to give anybody any insight into this. And uh, Mind of Monsters, Art of Fox. Please and, play uh, it. Please good. play it. I would love to see it. Very I'm telling you guys. So. And well, Blue, come on, I, the case is interesting to you now, isn't it? I mean, it's weird. Blue, no, I agree. Nasty. I just want to know, like, what, what kind of bracelet is this? Just curious. Is it one that I could get, like, at Target? Or is okay, it, like, a fair allergy bracelet? I, fair question. My understanding is it's, like, it's it, it said it was something about a blue bracelet. bracelet. Um, I don't know the exact idea of it, what it specifically looks like. Um Thank you, he Mike. really needs to take his picture down, okay? He's just too hot. Will he please change Listen, that picture? picture uh, that picture's been up since I trolled I John. It's, it's staying I up know. forever as a trophy. You, no, I know. I know. I, the day you posted it, we all went wild. It was so cute to watch you get messed up. I, I messed around with you. You were so cute. You didn't know what to do. You just laughed. Oh, yeah. It made you all nervous. Right. All right, guys. So, good Lord, Brian. Hey. Everything's funny. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Thank you uh, again, Mind of Monsters. This is this is this is what we should be doing with these oh, cases. This is good. Okay, oh God, I'm these things together. You're again, welcome. this uh, Arctic Fox's channel. Thank um, you. Another yeah. link I need to drop out here uh, if oh, we can. God. He's got a great channel along with Duchess and Mind of Monsters. Do these things every day, guys, and they do really good stuff on these. Very good work. <laughs> And I appreciate everything that all three of them do. So I'm um, scared. Do you happen to know maybe a timestamp of when it starts, Mind of Monsters, or just let it go? Shut up, bro. I, the the whole video was very informative. This was this is a video oh, that yeah. Arctic, and you know, if you watch him, if you follow him, he's a machine yeah. on missing people. Yes. This absolutely. is a video he that he a created a machine with missing people. He pumps out videos like nobody oh. else I've ever seen. Okay, thank you. Okay. But this whole video is full of really good information on all of these guys that are missing in the same area. It's not that long, I don't think. But he's okay. going to give you the rundown of Caleb, and then he'll go into the other guys that are missing right after Caleb. Awesome. Awesome. And awesome. he shows all of their pictures and what he was able to find on them as well. Yes, absolutely. Okay, JC, thank you very much for joining us, Han. Appreciate you very much. All right, guys. Have let's a good get day, guys. You too. Let's get this. Bye. I gotta get my charger. This should eat your battery, man. I gotta do something with this. To discuss what's going on, guys. This is Arctic Fox. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to discuss the multiple missing men that are missing from the Corpus Christi, Texas area, all very similar in age and many connected to fishing. And although law enforcement has said they don't believe there's a connection, I did want to take a look and get all of their faces out there, give you the information on each of the missing men, and you can draw your own conclusions. Um, also, I wanted to start with Caleb Harris because, as you know, I did a live stream on him two nights ago, and that's how we found out about the multiple missing men that are missing from that area, but um, they had said that the reward was going to expire on the 31st. I have very good news in regards to that. The family has not only extended the reward, uh, removed the deadline, uh, but they've also doubled the reward. So it is now $50,000 in reward money available for information that leads to the safe return of Caleb Harris. Again, if you have information on yeah. him, you can contact 361-826-2950. And we're going to start with Caleb. Go ahead and just go over the information. Um, we did come into a lot of information that we did not previously know during the live because we had locals in the chat 
for instance, the uh, gated community, the apartment complex was a gated community, but the gates weren't working at the time of Caleb's disappearance. Uh, but just to start off with Caleb and give you the basic information, he's a 21-year-old young man with brown hair and brown eyes, 5'11", 180 pounds, um, went missing on the 4th of March, 2024. Uh, according to a Snapchat ping, Caleb was last seen at around 2.45 a.m. near his apartment complex, the cottages in the 1900 block of Ennis Joslin Road near the campus of Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi, in Corpus Christi, Texas. After letting the dog out, Caleb left behind his vehicle keys and wallet as well as his ID. He was wearing uh, blue pants and a white shirt. His phone last pinged at 3 a.m. Anyone that has information on Caleb can contact the Corpus Christi Police at 361-886-2840, or you can contact 361-826-2950. And again, there is that $50,000 reward that's being offered. If you want more details on the case, certainly go and watch the live stream that we did two nights ago. There's a multitude of information on Caleb that we discuss in that live. Uh, moving on, we also have five other missing men from that area, and it's very, very alarming. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and move to this man here, Bradley Cy Brooks, who is another fisherman missing from the Corpus Christi area. Now, his flyer is hard to read, so I'm going to kind of blow it up here a little bit. He has been missing since the 19th of August, 2019 went missing out of Corpus Christi. At the time that he went missing, he was 36 years old, five foot six inches tall, 150 pounds with uh, brown eyes and brown hair. Um, let's see, Bradley was last seen at his home around 10 p.m. on the 18th of August, 2019. He was wearing a black shorts, a maroon t-shirt and white and black Nike tennis shoes. Bradley has a military type haircut horse-shaped tattoo on his chest that reads, all fall short of the glory of God, angel wings tattoo on his right arm, and scars on the back of his head. Anyone with information on Bradley's whereabouts is asked to contact the Corpus Christi Police at 361-886-2866 or Texas EquiSearch at 281-309-9500. We have... Three, I'm sorry, yeah, we have four other young men that are missing from the area as well. So let's try to get their photos up on the screen as well. Give me one moment here. Uh, next is Ivy. Oh, no, not Ivy. That's not the one I was looking for. Ivy. So this is Ivy. He is also missing from the area. Let me get his information up to read. Uh, so let's see here. Ivy. Gutierrez, missing from the Corpus Christi area as well. Um, I'm going to bring up a news article on my screen so I can give you as much information as possible on this one. Just bear with me for one moment. Um, so, let's see here. Ivy Joe Daniel Gutierrez was 29 years old at the time that he went missing on the 13th of November, 2021. Five foot three inches tall, 130 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. He's been missing, like I said, since the 13th of November, 2021. He was last seen in the Flower Bluff neighborhood of Corpus Christi. Family believes that he may have met with foul play. Anyone with information on Ivy Joe Daniels' disappearance, again, needs to contact the Corpus Christi Police Department at 361-888-2866. Guys, this is alarming that there's so many men missing from the area. And I just, like I said, I felt compelled that I needed to bring their faces to you because I feel like they're not getting the attention that they need. Uh, let's bring up the next young man that's missing from the area. This is going to be Jesse. Let me get his information up so I can give you that information. Bear with me for one moment here. 
it's just very distressing that we've got six men missing from the same area all seem to have connections to the fishing community okay so authorities in corpus christi texas are searching for a pleasanton man who disappeared during a fishing trip jesse albert garcia jr 38 has been missing since the 26th of june and he was last seen in robstown texas which is about 20 miles west of corpus christi jesse is five foot eight inches tall with brown hair and brown eyes family members say he was last seen driving a silver nissan frontier license plate number jyl9558 the truck also has a sticker on the back window of a pig with wings that's wearing a baseball cap. Uh, the family's very concerned about his safety and well-being. Anyone with information on Jesse or his whereabouts is asked to contact the, Atta, the Atascosa County Sheriff's Office at 830-769-3434, or you can contact his sister Terry at 830-366-1248. That is very, very alarming. Of course, uh, Jesse has been missing since the 20th. His sister Terry. Uh, the family is very concerned. License plate number. Jesse is five foot eight, in and he was last seen in Raw during a fishing trip. Jesse Albert Garcia, Jr., 38, has been missing since the 26th of June. And he was last seen in Robstown, Texas, which is about 20 miles west of Corpus Christi. Jesse is five foot eight inches tall with brown hair and brown eyes. Five, five, eight. Pig with wings. He's very concerned about his safety and well-being. Anyone with information on Jesse or his whereabouts is asked to contact the, Atta, the Atascosa County Sheriff's Office at 830 seven six nine three four three four or you can contact his sister terry at eight three zero three six six one two four eight that's very very alarming of course uh, jesse has been missing since the 26th of june 2023 so he's been missing for over a year at this point so i want to get his face out there we've got others out there that we need to get their faces up on the screen as well let's go next let's see here let's go with him okay real quick not to interrupt but do you guys see obviously there's a link to this okay well, I have a, yeah well i have a question were they all seen after fishing trips not at no not necessarily but that's the link to this if you're not catching it that there's something to do i don't mm -hmm. know whoever could be doing this is using the fishing thing as a way to lure them or whatever that's the gathered or the the guests that i'm getting from this okay um or something that has to do with somebody that's a fisherman as well um yep. whether it be oh, oh sorry no go ahead what what's that so i have a question about caleb right yeah how did i must have misheard it yesterday but how do they know what he was wearing because i thought when they, he was on <coughs> the camera the last time it was a teal shirt and blue pants jeans that's, and then I could swear what he said was a white shirt and blue jeans, but he wasn't caught on camera leaving. I don't think so. I think it was just that video that we saw with him in the parking lot with his friends was the last time we saw him. Well, I yeah. guess that. Yeah. So then there's my question. How do they know I mean, he changed clothes? I no idea. No idea. He, Unless it was just mixed up. He was seen bringing the dog back. So he was wearing a white T-shirt, teal pants and a hat. Okay, so when when he he was seen by a person or on video, by a person bringing the dog back. But right. there, the apartment has two doors. There's what you would consider to be the front door, which is actually the way the condos are built. It's the right. back door that leads into the pool pool area. Right. And he left out that door, and none of the cameras in the apartment complex were working in the oh, door yeah. that he went out of. That's okay. Good. Got you. That's a good question, though. Thank you, Clue. And thank you very much, Mind of Monsters, for that, too. Yeah, well, All right. Yeah. Moving on with this one now. Give me one second. Let me get his information up real quick. Oh, what I was saying, though, is obviously we see the link here has something to do with the fishing side of this, okay? 
and that's quite interesting to narrow it down to certain other aspects, whether it be somebody I saw in a chat with a bait shop, a boat, a boat captain or a fisherman or something like that, that has the, is setting this up per se. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah, you know well, I mean? that's why I asked Were they like, like were all these guys found missing with like an empty boat or no, you know what I mean? No, but it just links back to the fishing aspect. It's yeah. every, every, just about every thing. With yeah. Like well, somebody I'm, I'm, they well, knew. I'm just trying to rule out some kind of, you know, Loch Ness monster or some shit in the water. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, no, I got you. Um, I, yeah. It sounds like they all knew one person to me. Yeah. Or, 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 or they had come in contact with one that person. One, that one person is yeah. trying to know them, right? Because this is like, okay, this is Corpus Christi. It's not that big. I mean, it's a, it's a city, but I'm guessing people who fish, they sort of maybe know each other somehow or maybe not i don't know i could be wrong yeah but it's not like a huge city where things like this can get lost easily but no. it sounds like there is a some kind of thread towards and i'm the first thing i was thinking about was dexter remember yeah, they took, yeah. took took the bodies out by boat yep and dumped yep. them because none of the bodies have shown up right in yeah, any of these places that's the thing you know we're what the best place on the planet to get rid of something is in the middle of the ocean. Uh -huh. right? You know what I mean? So right. absolutely. But with, yeah, there's definitely, some weight. Yeah. There's yes. And there's definitely a connection to each one of these, in my opinion, I didn't realize this many, so I'm very grateful and I'll be following up with all of this now. And it um, started in 2021, I guess is the, so far 19, what we heard, right? Or 19? 2019, uh, oh, okay. Bradley side books, Brooks was 2019, August 19th to 2019. So yeah. Mm. And I don't. I'm, we're gonna feel, hear the rest of these and see where their their the years and dates and stuff are too. So, uh, thank you, Golf, very much uh, for your input. <clears throat> so this man's name is Patrick Harris. I'm Did sorry. You? No, what, you're all right. What dates do we have for the other ones that we've gone through so far? Um, well, we have Caleb's date, and then we have. Um, hold on, guys. Let me uh, let me see my own writing. How bad is that? Yeah. Right? Uh, Unfortunately, have, I, gotta, uh, I gotta hop down. But it was a nice catch up with everybody. Uh, this, like I said, this thing's like decreasing my battery, even though I'm charging it. So I'm down to like a couple percent. So I gotta hop down, man. You got an iPhone? No, I got a Android. But oh. I think there's something messed up with the uh, whatever that little thing is in their charging port. So I gotta okay. figure it out. Thanks for joining us, Willie. It's good to see you, yeah, bro. Man. I hope everybody has a good day. Bye. All right. All right. See you guys. See you, chat. All right, Cletus, I got um let me back this up a second here. Uh Bradley Cybrooks was August 19th of 2019. Um Ivy Gutierrez was November 13th um of 2021. Uh he is 29 years old. Uh Bradley Cybrooks was 31 years old, I believe. And then we had Jesse Garcia, June 26th of 2023. Okay. I didn't catch his age, and then we're moving to this guy here next. So, all right, all right, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, one second here, and we're gonna talk about how long he's been missing and the circumstances under which he went missing. Because again, it doesn't seem like very many people are talking about the fact that we've got six men missing from the same area, all under very similar circumstances, or all connected at least in age and to the uh, fishing community. And so we're going to talk about everything on here today. So, okay, that was, let's see, you just bear with me for one moment here and I'll get his pulled up real quick. I had it. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, here we go. Patrick Harris, missing from Corpus Christi, Texas, since December of 2022. Um, the Corpus Christi Police Department is asking for the public's help in locating 39-year-old Patrick Harris. Patrick was reported missing on the 20th of January, 2023. Um, so he's been missing for over a year at this point. And again, his family is not getting any help getting Patrick's face out there on social media right now, which is a damn shame. Um, and guys, I, I beg of you, whenever you see a missing person's flyer or a post about a missing person on social media, 
just take that extra second out of your day to share it to any of the missing persons groups that y'all belong to and share it to your personal Facebook page too. Share it to your Twitter account. I mean, every little bit helps in trying to bring these missing people home. But bear with me for one moment because my computer seems to be acting all kinds of wonky on me right now. But we will get that information about uh, Patrick Harris to you as well. Just bear with me a moment. So let's see here. Corpus Christi police are asking for your help in finding 39-year-old Patrick Harris. Patrick was reported missing on the 20th of January, 2023, and was last seen in the area of Airline Road and Williams Drive on or around the 23rd of December, 2022. He is 5 foot 9 inches tall and weighs 185 pounds with brown hair and blue eyes. Patrick Harris was entered into NamUs, and there's no new leads on his case. Anyone with information on Patrick or his whereabouts, again, is asked to contact the Corpus Christi Police Department. And we've got one more person to discuss. Bear with me for one moment while I bring his information up. Let's see here. So next is... 23-year-old Jerry Zamora III. The family of Jerry Zamora III are asking for the public's help in locating him. Um, he went missing in the Coastal Bend area and, again, not getting a lot of attention. How old did he say he was? 23? I think so. Uh, sorry, guys. So, cool. I'm glad you paused. What's up? That this guy went missing in the area that Caleb's phone last pinged? Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. Here, let me back that up just for a second so you guys can catch the beginning of that because I missed the date too. Right about there, I think. Or the third. So next is 23-year-old Jerry Zamora III. The family of Jerry Zamora III are asking for the public's help in locating him. Um, he went missing in the Coastal Bend area and, again, not getting a lot of attention. Was last seen on Old Brownsville Road and Westview. Let's see. 23-year-old Jerry Zamora III was last seen on Old Brownsville Road and the West Point area, says. According to the family, he suffers from a severe medical condition, uh, catatonia, schizophrenia. He forgets certain information and sometimes cannot comprehend what people are saying, having very limited responses. Jerry was last seen wearing a black hoodie, a black cut-off pair of pants, Long green and black striped socks, sandals, and let's see here. Also had a green backpack with a smaller red backpack. Anyone with information on Jerry or his whereabouts is asked to contact the Corpus Christi Police Department. That number again is going to be 361-886-2840 or 361-886-2600. So there we have it. We've got six men missing. The only one... That doesn't seem to really have any ties to the fishing community is Jerry Zamora the third. But <clears throat> again, I felt it was worthy to put him in with the other five. Again, this is very, very disturbing, guys. I don't know what's going on within the Corpus Christi area, why we have all these young men going missing, but they need coverage. And I figure if I can bring coverage to them along with Caleb Harris, who is just the most recent of the six to go missing, I wanted to do that. Now, certainly you feel free to give me your thoughts in the comment section of the video. If you think these cases may be connected, I just find it very, very alarming. Now, granted, there has been significant time in between the men going missing, so they may not be connected, but I just think it's worth putting the information out there. Guys, again, do me a favor, give the video a like. 
It does help everyone to see these men's faces. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, consider clicking that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll always be alerted whenever I post another missing persons video. Most importantly, though, click that share button. Share this to your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, wherever you have social media. It only takes one second of your time to do, and it can make all the difference in the world in whether we're able to find these young men and bring them home safe or not. As always, guys, do want to thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Y'all be kind to one another out there, and let's bring these young men home safe. Okay, so those are <clears throat> the, the other people. Now, there's another video I take at Mind of Monsters where he talks about, you said there was a local that popped in and started talking. Yeah, it was a live that me, him, and Dutchie did about okay. Caleb. And there was a, a local in chat, and she gave us so much good information. And she actually mentioned these other guys missing in the area. And then, of course, that triggered myself, Arctic, and Duchess to start looking into these other cases. And, of course. Which it, you know, now. and then yeah, you had the law enforcement interview with the local reporter, and he made point to mention that there's no connection. But thank you those so of us much. That do this full time see a yeah. connection their right. ages are close they all enjoy fishing and you know i'm not putting a crazy <laughs> psycho sk on these cases but i'm just saying if you look at the patterns they take breaks in between yep. they like they're built the same too yep fiance yep. said like the same size sort of it, it just matches except for I'll be honest, the, the only one that doesn't fit with the same thing that Fox said is Jerry Zamora, which it's just off. It doesn't mean it doesn't. It's not there. It just mm -hmm. doesn't match up as much as the others do. And to what, me, I, it doesn't matter. Wasn't uh, one of them, they said something about about uh, Arctic was describing the vehicle. So is his vehicle gone too? It was last seen driving a Silver Frontier. But uh, the car is gone? I don't know that. It's Jesse Garcia. Uh, is that what it is? The from your understanding, Mine of Monsters is the vehicle missing too? I believe, don't quote me on this. I've got a thousand cases in my head, but I want to say they found the vehicle. I'd have to look okay. back through the through the well, information, but just as far as they're all missing, and that's and that's it right there. And I'll be doing you guys have done the same thing to me, I'll be following up with all of these now as well, too. Um, and you know, it, Corpus Christi has Texas AM right there. They have yes. a Texas A&M and the Gulf is like, you know, you could walk to the Gulf from the apartment complex. Right. Right. Um, which that's a lot. That says a lot to me with, I can't get past this whole fishing thing. That's that really like locked me down right there. Um, it's, there's definitely a link. At least it sure as hell feels like there is guys. Um, mm -hmm. Can I, can I ask? So you said the authorities are saying that these cases are not linked at all. Or just Caleb's is not linked. The, to... the way the police officer, the way that he worded it when the uh, the reporter interviewed him in his office, it was the sheriff. Mm -hmm. He said, we're aware of the other missing men in the area. We have found no connection. When they were talking about Caleb. Yeah. Okay, so we're assuming then that no connection to what Caleb went through is what he right. meant. Okay, all right. Which the, they can, they may not have found a link to it as of yet. That doesn't mean they're not linked, you guys. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, wow, it's it's. You got to look at cases like BTK. One hundred percent. You know? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like it, it, it to me, if you look at it like that, it the the mo on this looks to be like there's one person. Something happens to them. There's a little break. Then there's another one. Then there's a little break. Mm -hmm. Then there's another one. Then there's a little break. I mean, this is how these people operate, guys. So, so I when when Caleb he was buying snacks and stuff for his like fish fishing trip. trip, right? Right. What what was a typical fishing trip for him? Alone <laughs> with the group? Did they take a boat out? Uh. 
I've heard of like his father talking about like them going fishing, but I don't know as far as anything that he did regularly. There's we've seen so many pictures with him on different variations on a lot of different fishing trips, obviously. So um, I don't know if any of his roommates did that with him. I don't know, Mind of Monsters, if you have any more info on stuff like that than I may. Do you happen to know any of those things? I, I don't have any further than than he loved to fish. And as an avid fisherman myself, I'll tell you, I fish at 5 o'clock in the morning. I fished, went fishing at 5 o'clock in the afternoon and stayed out till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning by myself. Right. So yeah. it's not uncommon to go by yourself or to go with a group of people. If you love to fish like that, like that's, yes. I mean, you get off work, you got your fish poles in the back of your pickup no, truck. I, I get that. I was just wondering for him specifically, because a lot of the photos for me personally that I see of him with fish, it almost looks like he could be taking a selfie, but at the same time, I've seen him holding them with two hands, which were somebody else is there with him. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, and I'm sure that there's many of them with his father because his father's another fisherman or his friends that, ha that are fishermen. So it's hard to differentiate which one is which. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, that's that's still a good question. Um, it, what's the time time of year that all these men went missing? Is it different or is it, it like? They were January, November, June, uh, August. So it's all around. It's all around. Because oh, okay. I'm just thinking like, oh, yeah, somebody's taking a trip to that area to do what they do who know you know yeah i look at that too like was it only in the winter time yeah we're showing no. up or was it in the summertime but it's spread out no there aren't any you're right in the spring i don't think yeah i mean it could be that caleb's is like motivated by different something you know Although, and the I police will, knows that right i will say though golf if we look at we got december or we got november december january and then we also have um, June and August. So hmm. I, it could also depend on, you know, in one sense, you could look at it as in there's a month break between. And then at the same time, we have November, I'm sorry, June and August, which is in the summer months. So who knows? And who knows if there's not any more that have not just been found out at this point? Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. From other places. Cause right. Yeah, if you look at that, like there's a lot of people taking fishing trips to Corpus Christi than the other way around. So it's like a popular spot, right? Right. And, um, hmm, okay. That's very interesting. It, it is. Brian, thanks for bringing this up. <laughs> uh, yes, and Mind of Monsters, thank you for letting us see this, this yeah. wide open scenario over here with this too, because I'm all about this kind of stuff. And I will definitely be covering this completely now on this side of things too. Um. Now, the video, did you want to, re did you think it was a good idea to review this other video? Uh, I found one that's you, him, and Duchess um, from nine days ago. Is that the one you were talking about? Yeah, that's the live one that we were all up on panel. Okay, is there, you know, about roughly a timestamp or is it the whole video? It, it's a whole video. Like, we okay. did a whole video on them. I pulled up map time and we looked at the interstate, which freaks me out in these missing cases. Instantly, I'm looking for interstates and ways around and ways oh, out. Yeah. But just talking about the months, think about it. November, and, and this is my true crime grinding brain going. November, mm -hmm. you got Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. Christmas is in December. Mm -hmm. New Year's, you got a possible break. In June, that's going to be out for school and then would go back to school around August. Exactly, exactly. With the college in the area. With the college, that's why I was getting ready to say, yeah. Um, God, there's so many of these cases we cover that involve college kids anymore. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that's are good points. All right, guys, let me throw this up here. Let's. I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit too. Um, and if it's too much, you guys let me know. And I'll slow it right back down. Um, but let's check this out and see what we hear here. Uh, again, thank you for this, Mind of Monsters. Corpus Christi. Yeah, thank you. Oh, and again, guys, this is Arctic Boss's channel. Um, of course, Mind of Monsters is up here with him as well as, well as Dutchie or Duchess, as you guys may know her. Uh, she's been in here quite a couple of times and on my panel a couple of times with me, too. So, all right, here we go. He went and walked his puppy with his roommates, friends, uh, came back, ordered some Uber Eats and seems to have disappeared. And his family is very concerned. They're asking for people to start talking about Caleb's case and getting the word out. This man's been missing for 26 days as of today. And so we really need to talk about what's going on here. And so I want to welcome Duchess and Mind of Monsters, and let's get started. How are you ladies doing tonight? 
I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me as a guest to talk about this case. Absolutely doing great. I'm honored to be here awesome. tonight and be here on panel with you guys. Thank you. Same here. Well, I'm thankful to have you guys here. Now you get. Oh, always, always. Now, on your screen, you can see Caleb Stace. Uh, again, college student, 21 years old, 5 foot 11 inches tall, 180 pounds. Out of Corpus Christi, Texas, and the Corpus Christi Police Department is asking for people's help in locating Caleb. According to a Snapchat ping, he was last seen at around 2.45 a.m. on the 4th of March near his apartment complex. The cottage is in the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn Road near the campus of Texas A&M Texas A University. Um, after letting his dog out, Caleb left behind his vehicle, his keys, his wallet, his ID. He did take his phone with him, and at the time that he went missing, Caleb was wearing teal pants and a white shirt. Caleb's phone last pinged at around 3 a.m., and they're asking if you have any information on Caleb or his whereabouts to please get in contact with the Corpus Christi Police Department at 361-886-2840. Uh, I know that I have been researching the case, and Caleb's dad says that there was absolutely no reason why he felt that Caleb would take off like that. I mean, the last thing Caleb did was order snacks so that he would have them for school the next day. Hey, Blondie. I want to welcome everyone. Hey, Blondie. Hey, Barbara Hall. Marion. Hey, Kit. Uh, Dandy. I'm so glad everyone's here tonight. Let's see. Michelle, Chris, Allie, Grandma. Um, so many of you. Good. Uh, Elmer, Southern Gal, Carrie, Mecky, or Mexi, Texi. Um, just thank all of you for being here tonight. And I really appreciate all y'all. Um, but yeah, we're going to dive into the case. And I want to hear what Duchess and Mo Mind of Monsters have to say, uh, you know, because this is a very perplexing one, guys. It really is a perplexing case. When I first saw this, I, the thing that's been steady on a lot of people's minds is how many people are going missing without their shoes. Exactly. That 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 got me too. You know, I'm I'm used to it happening with autistic children because that happens frequent frequently with them, but not so often with adults. Right. Uh, this case is just so unusual. I was kind of doing a catch up, you know, today from the Corpus Christi. I think I dropped that link in chat um, from the WordPress from Corpus Christi, um, the senior officer that had an update on the 28th. And I was just reading back over this case and I have a lot of questions. Yeah, I do, too. Um, you know, how how does this young man just disappear? He had sent a couple of Snapchats prior to going missing. And the last one seems to be a little bit of a, alarming to me because it's just a desolate bridge area and that's the last thing he sent right and the one thing i liked about this article um from the senior officer jennifer collier she is the one who put this out for uh the citizens of corpus christi from the police department they actually um established a timeline the detectives for the night that harris disappeared and it's in that article and i think that's it was really enlightening to kind of read this on the 28th to kind of walk it back through um, what had happened? He had been, you know, interacting at a nearby apartment. He's caught on videotape playing with a puppy. You know, he's seen a couple of different times. And I guess that's when he sends a couple of these Snapchats out to his friends. But then suddenly he's apparently walking around the neighborhood with this puppy at 3.03 a.m. I think is when that last Snapchat went to his friend in San Antonio, Texas, uh, when he was by a small bridge over a drainage ditch on the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn. Um, and that was just a few hundred feet from the entrance to his apartment complex. And after that 320 Uber driver leaves his food, um, he never shows back up. Did it? Does yeah, anybody, and I know that there's been a couple was, was of discrepancies. That, was the dog found? Because I know that that was well, the last there, time he was walking the puppy. So do we know where did the puppy come back? That I have. I haven't seen any information on, on whether the dog came back or not, but I do know that initially there, the, the initial report was that he had picked up his Uber Eats order, but in that statement that was put out by law enforcement. That has been cleared up, guys. This is from nine days ago, but the dog was brought back to the home. He was seen bringing the dog back, just so nobody gets confused on that, just so you know. It says that the roommates had found his Uber Eats order still sitting there the next day. That's yeah. right. With his truck parked out front. The only thing missing was his phone. Um, you know, all of his uh, personal belongings, you know, his wallet and his keys were left behind at the apartment. Um, and all that was missing was him, you know, and his cell phone. And his cellmate, you know, his oh, cellmates, listen to me. I got cell phone on my mind. His roommates described him as somebody that's a homebody, a creature of habit. Um, so, you know, once they couldn't find him after they found his food on the porch, you know, they decided to call it in. 
Southern Gal True Crime says, I think he, I read he took the puppy back and went back out for some reason. See, that's not according to what the police statement is. Now, maybe they're not giving us all of the information, but, you know, in that WordPress document, according to the police, it says at 2.44 a.m., he shared a Snapchat video with his younger sister depicting him walking the puppy through what appears to be the apartment complex. And then at 3.03 a.m., Harris sent another Snapchat photo to a high school friend currently residing in San Antonio, and the photo depicted a small bridge over a drainage ditch on the 1900 block within a few hundred feet of the entrance to the complex. And at 3.12, that Harris's cell phone last Thank shared location know. data with the nearest cell phone tower. And at 3.20, that's when the Uber Eats driver delivered the order to the apartment, leaving it outside the door per the request on the order. And it says this is currently the best timeline investigators have been able to compile while working with existing available data. But it is an ongoing investigation and this is evolving and it's subject to change as more data and information is required. Um, so, you know, the more that they research into this, you know, they just went on to say that the Uber Eats order was found at the front door. His truck was parked out front. His wallet and keys were left behind. Uh, the only thing that was missing was his cell phone, but it never gave any other information about the dog being returned. It did, it did say they took his laptop. Um, all of his firearms, fishing gear and waders, all of that were uh, found in the apartment. No sign of a struggle, uh, no sign of a violent act, no signs that the apartment had been recently deep cleaned for any reason. Um, everyone's been extremely cooperative. This just has me puzzled. Um, what are your thoughts, Mind of Monsters? What, what well, are you I I had to grind on it today because I really um, I'd seen I had seen him um, actually in one of the groups, the missing groups. So today I did a lot of reading up on his case and watching some videos and interviews. What okay. I saw was that the dog was re was returned to the home okay. and that the Uber Eats was left on the porch. So they did somebody the bring ring. the dog back or did the dog come back on its own? Did, the did way that say? it was the way that it was written when I read it, it says the dog returned home. And it was written just like that. It didn't say he returned the dog. It just said the dog returned home. And that the Uber Eats was left on the porch and he just seemingly just vanished. And something else that I found was very concerning was the um, the sheriff. I believe it was the sheriff. Or it might have been a detective. I'm almost positive it was the sheriff that was speaking in an interview. Said that um, people that are searching to be careful searching around that bridge because it has methane gas. And he was concerned about people going under that bridge or anywhere near it. So that was that was kind of that an is, odd thing. Yeah. That's interesting that that's yeah, the, the area. The, they talk yeah, I mean, and. That now we have had several people confirm that the dog was brought back and then he went back out after he brought the dog in. Um, and I had some people asking about the roommates and stuff. The law enforcement has talked with everyone that had contact with Caleb that day. Uh, the friend yes. that he had been playing video yes. games with in Colorado, the roommates that he had been out walking the dog with, they have all mm -hmm. been talked to. And everyone has been, they, they said that they're not people of interest in this case, including the Uber driver. The Uber yes, driver it, had, had that she, there's no reason to believe that he had anything to do with this. In fact, in the police document that I'm reading, it says here that the detectives confirmed that the Uber driver was alone by reviewing surveillance video from the convenience store where she picked up Kayla. Uh, I, the Uber driver has been cleared. It was a female Uber driver. Uh, I did hear that. Uh, it is still a good question, Terry, to know if any of the other men had ordered Uber eats or anything like that uh, i agree so just giving you guys a heads up on that Philip's order and she has been eliminated as a suspect in harris's disappearance mm -hmm. it's so strange though and i know barbara was asking no, about cameras this corpus christi exactly exactly and you know if you were going to leave if you were planning to take off you wouldn't do it barefoot you would take your wallet and your keys with you your vehicle you wouldn't go on foot barefoot like that so it's, this certainly wasn't something that was planned uh, and as far as the cameras go, Barbara, it's Corpus Christi. There's cameras all over the place there. Yeah, Barbara, let me give you a little statistics just to let you know. It says that investigators said they have been checking over 50 businesses and private residents. They have retrieved video from 27 different locations, including city-owned traffic cameras, but they continue to search for additional sources. Detectives have written 16 search electronic search warrants, submitted over 70 preservation requests, and issued. Okay, hold on a minute. Um, Pauline Young says that Jerry Zamora, the one that I said didn't match up, was found April 8th. Do you know the, the details behind that one, Pauline? Of like what happened when they found him or the situation? 
and if he's okay or what the deal is that's all uh they could terry i know that for a fact but um i don't know anything on that at all pauline about him being fine i'm glad i know that before i looked into him anymore um but it depends on the scenario and the situation as to how they found him and what his scenario is now uh, whether or not i i stop looking at him um because also guys he's a little different in my opinion too because he's got specific issues that could cause him to go missing okay as compared to the rest of these guys he had some medical problems that kind of were set that apart too um if you got any info on that pauline if you could throw in the chat for me i'd really appreciate it thank you dear issued 14 subpoenas for electronic data related to this investigation Yeah, I mean, Grandma, yeah, it is a perplexing case. That's that's why we wanted to talk about it tonight, because, you know, aside from Mob Crew, I've seen very few people covering this case. I think uh, Steve with True Crime Web has covered it a little bit, but there's mm -hmm. not very many people talking about it right now. Misty says it was very foggy that morning. Very interesting. Um, and it also did say that forensic computer examiners have already reviewed over 600 gigabytes of electronic data and continue to pour over other data as it arrives almost on a daily basis. That's pretty interesting. So, wow, it seems like they would have found something. As much as they just said they went over, I mean, well, 14 and, subpoenas. <laughs> wow, this is true. And we don't know what if anything they found on the electronic devices um you know and he has his phone with him uh you know i know they've done phone phone pings and everything like that he didn't have his wallet so they can't track any type of banking information that's that's what's scary when people go and they don't have any financial documents no bank cards no checking account with them there's really not much you can do to try to track them and it appears that the phone has gone dead or is turned off so Right. And I thought it was very interesting that they went on to share that the team that is investigating Caleb Harris's disappearance um, is actually consisting of investigators from police department's criminal investigation division, the organized crime unit, the FBI, the Texas Rangers and the United States Marshal Service, along with three forensic computer examiners and one civilian crime analyst. Um, so they have followed up on 14 Crime Stoppers tips, 31 tip line tips, and several others from various sources. That's the most information yeah, and, uh, I think I've ever they're still waiting. Yeah, uh, well, they say that they're still waiting on information on his phone records. And Kim, yeah, we did talk about the, the bridge uh, that was kind of sus looking. That was the last Snapchat sent by uh, Caleb with his phone. We talked about that earlier. The bridge is not very far from the complex, Lisa. Uh, not very far at all. Uh, what did they say? They said it was like less Let's than see. what three miles or something like that. Yeah, let me look. It says um, it's just a few hundred feet. From yeah, that bridge, guys, I did a whole thing with Google and the little guy yesterday and walked all that last night. It's literally right there where that picture we we went to the spot where the picture was taken. And it's right by the apartment co it's in, in the complex right there. He can literally walk out there, boom, bang, boom, you're right there. So it is very close. From the entrance to his apartment complex. Yeah, yeah so not far at all. <coughs> Mind of Monsters, go ahead and give your input. I mean, you've, you've been reading up on it all day today. Tell us what your thoughts are. He seems happy to me. You, you know, I mean, what we see in pictures may not always be what it is, but he seems like a fisherman and was going to college and... You know, if he's gaming and has friends, it's like it, this is it's so many puzzle pieces that are missing from this puzzle. You know, law enforcement seems like they're on it, especially if they have the Texas Rangers on it. Those guys are phenomenal. You know, it just it's it's weird that he walked a dog. I mean, and it's not uncommon for somebody his age to be up at, at three o'clock in the morning. If he had school the next day, that would be kind of strange. But I did read something about a fishing trip, too. So, you know, why would he have just vanished into thin air? And I haven't been in Corpus Christi in about 20 years, but the last time I was there, that's a nice area. There's a lot of nice houses on stilts and the beach is beautiful. And it's not the part that I was in was, didn't seem like a high crime area. So it's like, you know, people don't just vanish. And I think that's what's eating me the most about this is people don't just vanish into thin air. Right. Like, and according to the police um, yeah, document yeah. that I was reading through earlier, it did say, according to the police department, that uh, Harris's two roommates um, told them that, um 
that Harris replied that he was going to stay up and order snacks via Uber Eats for his school lunch later that day on Monday. That that's what the snacks were for. It was for school. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, his behavior, according to the dad, was mm -hmm. nothing out of the ordinary. And the poor man, uh, you know, he is torn up about his son. He just doesn't know what to think. He, I know that they've got to go fund me for the family to help support the search efforts and everything right now. Um, oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you for sending everyone over from, from nonsense. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much for being here. I told them earlier today uh, that you would be going live, that we'd be talking about this case because here we have a, another missing person. They have captured all of this information, camera footage. They have talked to everyone that's involved. Um, everyone is, you know, being cooperative. They have um, issued all of these uh, warrants for electronic devices. They are running forensic data as we speak, and they have not come up with anything. And he's been missing since March the 4th. I mean, we're, we're, we're coming up close to a month on Caleb Harris. It just seems like they would have come up with something. I know. I mean, we just... I, we we just passed a month on Sebastian's case. And so we've got to start, you know, really pumping Caleb's face out there because his case has been completely overshadowed by Riley's and Sebastian's cases. And no one's really pumping his case out there. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if I'm he hadn't really been in one of the groups, I wouldn't have seen him, to be honest. I, I, I really seen appreciate him everyone being around here. Twitter. Yes, we do appreciate. Hey, Six Sense Amelia, it's good to see you. I hadn't seen you in a while. It's so important. We have so many missing people. And this 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 young man caught my eye because I saw that he lived in Corpus Christi. And, you know, that is near the water. And when I think about <clears throat> these cases that happen along the coastlines, I always worry about somebody going out in the water. But I did see they saw that his waders and all of his fishing gear and everything, um, you know, was at his apartment. So I'm like, well, he didn't just decide to go out on the boat or go out fishing or or something crazy in the middle of the night. Um, and that's why I asked about the dog, because I had not seen anything. And it wasn't mentioned in the police um, summary on the 28th. And I figured that would have been a, a critical part was, did the dog come back? I, I figured that would definitely be in there, considering they gave all the details of everything else. Um, I wonder if he's having was having any trouble in school. Like, did anybody know if he was doing well in school? Um, was he was he socially and athletically active in school? I mean, I don't know what his major was or anything like that. Did he have a girlfriend? Well, I mean, that's that that's a good question. I mean, but like I said, the dad didn't say anything about him struggling in school or anything. But I also know, having been a college student, that even if someone's struggling, they don't always let their parents know about that. So, yeah, especially that and age. It, it seems like there's a lot of college students and well, young adults that are going missing. Um, we have a lot here in South Carolina and I just feel like some of these people aren't, you know, going missing because they want to be missing. It just makes me really concerned. You know, we had um, that case that I covered out of North Carolina, the young girl who said she got her car and all of her phone and everything stolen at a gas station in Greensboro, North Carolina. You know, she still hasn't been found and she has five kids. So crazy. And she's like, she's I a young mom. She's 25. So <laughs> I'm like, where are these people? Yeah. Where are yeah. they? They just did. I mean, they can't just disappear. Uh, and a Southern guy was asking if anyone knows how close the cam, the closest camera was to the bridge. I am not aware that any of that information is put out uh, or been put out. And I know that they haven't said anything about any medical conditions that uh, they have. So. Yeah, we'd probably have to look at it on Google Earth to see if, you know, what that area looks like to be able to have a, an actual idea, because it doesn't actually give a construct in this document, uh, you know, stating where the, the cameras are actually located. So, um, but it sounds like they've, they've tried to a lot. Of, are you putting in your 10 cents? Thank you. Hartley says that they need to look at the cameras. <laughs> well, I mean, and I agree, but the thing is is that the the bridge was apparently within feet of the apartment complex and that apartment complex had cameras all over it so let's see i, I agree dippy um let's see hold on a second well at least you know it does say that they did search caleb's apartment oh. and they found no evidence of a struggle uh, did not look like any violent act had been carried out in his apartment, and there were not any signs that the apartment had been recently deep cleaned. 
because that was one of my other questions. So when I read this updated article, that was um, that was very helpful. Yeah. Um. So golf says that just to add that there are cameras on that bridge. That's good to know. Thank you for that call. Um, Brian, I don't know what happened. Try to. I see. Okay, I brought you back up. It just bounced down, but I don't know. Somebody, your background seems to be blotching all over the place. I don't know if it's you or what it is, but um, you're good to go for me. Just I don't know what knocked you down, but you're back up there. Just so you know. Mind of Monsters, if you want to try to share that, I will put it up on screen. Let me just do this. <coughs> okay. Heads up, y'all. I'm not the best Google Earth driver. Oh, so these this, agencies. this is what yeah, I grabbed from is, Twitter today. Okay. So here's Go the bridge. And, yeah, okay. Guys okay. See, you don't really you don't know what you don't know until you're looking at it, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's the methane kind of, gas, that's concerning. Very so there's concerning. the apartment complex right there. Yep, right here. So you're yep. not yeah. far from the apartment complex. I mean, no, nice, it's, that looks yeah, like a nice area. Yeah, because it, it said it was just a like a hundred feet from the entrance. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm not wrong, this is is it it's another gated community. Wow. And then you have the bridge that's literally right here. <clears throat> so right, right to the bridge. Now, see, when I look at these open roads like this, you know, I think about areas where I live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. When it's 3 a.m. and you're out walking on these roads like that, I mean, you got people that come flying through there because we're a tourist town and you have people that are driving intoxicated. And if they don't see you, we've had people just get hit from walking on the road. It just happened. We had a death just a couple of days ago where somebody was out walking on 31 and somebody hit him. And um, I just wonder, like, if that happened, where's he at? Like, is that possible? Is it possible? Can you show that bridge again there, Mind of Monsters? Yeah. The bridge is, like, within feet of the apartment complex. It's not far at all. Yeah, it's, like, right there beside of it. Mm-hmm. And um, Missy is saying something about the gates not working. Well, what gates are you talking about, Missy? Or it's a gated community. Okay, so go back up here. You can see the gate right here. Okay. Hey, Kimber, thanks so for coming over. Close to it. We're glad you're here. We're glad everyone's here to listen to this case. It's so important. Yeah, thanks for that information, Misty. I did not know that the, the gate. Are you local, working. Misty, to that area? Camera and gate to complex did not work. Interesting. Well, that's wow. concerning in itself. And then this is something else, and this is just me from working cases and living in Florida. Right here is an interstate of some type or a highway. And it's a trend, girly. It's a trend in these missing cases. There's an interstate nearby. Yeah. And that may just be my true crime brain, but that's highly concerning to me. I always look for things like that, too. We think a lot of light. Thank you, Misty. Thank you, Misty, for letting me know that. We appreciate you being here. Yeah. Um, uh, Michelle if you had have any me. information, tell us. Well, now, Michelle, uh, they looked throughout the neighborhood for signs that someone had been hit by a car. And they also called all the local hospitals, law enforcement and family, to see mm -hmm. if there were any identified people that fit uh, Caleb's description. And there wasn't. And did he have a girlfriend or had he just broken up with a girlfriend? Like what was his relationship situation? Like had he, you know, was there somebody that he had been, um, ha that he had recent argument with or did he have any enemies? I mean, I, he doesn't look like he would have any enemies. He looks like he's a sweet young man, but you just never know. I mean, um, yeah, it's crazy that those have to ask yeah. Um, yeah, well, see, and that's concerning too, New York, because I just did a big video yesterday talking about how the truck stops along the interstate system are a network for traffickers. And so that's also very concerning because I know I-40 runs right through the area. Okay, Rob says no girlfriend. Okay, interesting. That's good to know. 
because you got to think about all aspects when you think about why somebody might be missing. Like, <clears throat> did they have any enemies? Were they, you know, were they into to drugs? Were they in addiction? Um, did they have a criminal background? Would they be running away from something? Would they be running running to something? You know, could they have met with a dire situation? Like, could they have been robbed or hit by a vehicle? Um, and obviously, his, it says that his roommates and everyone, you know, they've been more than willing. Like, his roommates were the ones that actually reached out to law enforcement because they couldn't find him. So, yeah. And it's, it's just completely baffling with as many cameras are there in that area. You would think some one of the cameras would have at least caught something. It, it just blows my mind. I know that Missing 401 has has tried to cover this because of how baffling it is, too. Yeah, I, I had seen that recently where they were going to cover it. Um, yeah. Dippy, the family says it's just completely out of character for him, that this is unlike him. His dad said that he didn't show any signs of anything being wrong or out of the ordinary. It appears to be an exit. And this is a busy little area. Sorry, guys. I was traveling around on the map with y'all. But, I mean, you got businesses on this side. I was looking for a truck stop. There's a gas station. And this is a little ways up, but the whole thing's concerning. Absolutely. Uh, Dippy, the address was in the 1900 block of Ennis Jocelyn Road. Mm -hmm. The Cottages Apartment Complex. I'll tell you, apparently he doesn't have a girlfriend or didn't have a recent breakup. Missy says that the CVS right uh, on the other side is probably the closest camera. Oh, wow. Interesting. This over here on this side, that's a mattress firm. <clears throat> yeah, it does say they got more than 50 businesses and private residences. Um, they were checked for video and that video was actually received from 27 different locations. Um, city owned traffic cameras um, plus the 27 locations. So the 27 locations are separate from all the traffic cameras. But they're looking for additional sources. So, you know, if you know something, if you have any information, please reach out to law enforcement and let them know. Um, and they've offered a $25,000 reward for information. And I think his father appeared on News Nation. Is that correct? I believe so. I know that he's been going anywhere and everywhere that will have him trying to get Caleb's story out there. Good. Do you want to play that video for us or? I don't have it. I didn't have a chance to really look for that video earlier, Dutch. Let me uh, see if I can find it and I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay. Or you can just share it on your, just share it and I'll add it to the stream. Yeah. Let me look it up on my laptop real quick. He went on Nancy Grace, I believe, or this may just be an interview with Nancy. <clears throat> Dippy, they talked to the Uber driver, pretty much cleared her. They've talked to all of his roommates. They talked to the person he was gaming with in Colorado, and none of them are considered even remotely persons of interest at this time. I got to be honest with everybody here. I'm sorry to say this. I mean, I'm not sorry to say it, but after watching the last video and seeing the possibility with these missing people and these links i mean that and the that or or what my ridiculous in my mind theory was last night about the alligator situation doesn't make nothing else makes any sense if this was the case and there's no shame in this that there was something that you know somebody put this this in there to meet up with him and just took him whether it's for trafficking whether it's for whatever whether it's for, you know, like Brian had stated, somebody um, that's hating on that person's lifestyle, or whatever, what do you want to call it? it? That's the only thing that makes any sense to me are these things that we've just talked about that we're listening to right now, guys. I got to say, in this case, period, that's the only thing that makes any sense to me. So this is very interesting to me, very No, he did not take his wallet with him this, uh, at all. I'm trying to look and see if I could find a video. Thank you, Pinon. For that. He looks like such a sweet young man. 
yeah, he looks like the boy next door. He liked to fish. That was his big thing. All the pictures I've seen of him are doing outdoors things. And they said that when they went and looked at the apartment complex, he had waders, fishing gear, and, and hunting gear there. So, Well, Dip, they're still doing the forensic analysis on his phone, and they haven't come back and said what, if anything, has been found. I don't even know they have the full results of the analysis back yet. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if it's going to echo, so um, let's all pray all right. <laughs> that it doesn't. Hey, Mama Bear, you're welcome to join us. <laughs> um, okay. Let me know when you're ready, you, when you can see it. I'm yep, try to I see it. Uh, it's not going to be blocked. What are you talking about? Don't block me. This thing is going to get on my nerves. Hang on, let me go back and I'll click on it again. I don't know why it wants to block. Why is it not going to play it? Hang on. Brian, do you want me to take, take, pull you down? Is that what you're saying in the chat or no? Okay. All right. Um, well, thank you for being up here with us, buddy. I appreciate it. Of course, we'll it's going to take me to an ad. We'll continue with this. No, we do not want to sign up for that. I'm so glad we have people from the area in chat tonight that can answer questions that yes. they really be familiar with. Yes, we really appreciate y'all being here. Bear with us for this ad to go through for Babel. Uh, I need to turn the volume. Why is it not letting me unmute this thing? What are you saying, Clue? I'm being so serious. Look through history. Where are the bodies of some of these we've seen? I'm just saying, like, I, I can remember <clears throat> back in the day going to, like, the Walmarts, right? And yeah. they had that great big poster board or, or cork board and forever a missing photo. Mm -hmm. Where are the bodies of all these people? You know what I mean? Uh, agreed. Agreed. Well, I got to be honest with you guys. If they were... If it was possible to drain the large bodies of water that surround us all, it would be scary as hell. I'm telling good. you right now. Touche, right? That's a good right. That's I mean way too, but like we're I'm I mean, look in the middle of the country, right? No no ocean around you. That's like that's there's there's people everywhere that are just gone. And I, when I look at the ones where Someone just said a lot of them are like barefoot, right? Mm -hmm. It almost makes you wonder is it like a sleepwalking thing? In some other cases, yeah. That could make some sense. Uh, hey, Cassie. It definitely could. Um, these are, there's a lot of these like that have recently that have been barefoot, but I don't think they're linked in that sense because we had the kid from Alaska. We have Sebastian. Those two are autistic scenarios. Um, this, you know, Caleb's not autistic, but it's just a weird coincidence that it all fits in like that too. I agree with that. Um, where are the people going that are going missing is a good point. You know, that's, that's huge. Like where the hell are all the people going to, um, the uh, the vehicle mystic, I think somebody stated what had I think uh, Mina Mantra said she believes it was found, but not him. Um, it's just you know, a, water is a big place. Listen, guys, when I was on fire sir in the fire service, we did a lot of like dredging and draining and 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 going through like ponds and lakes and stuff, and we found people that we didn't know were missing while we're looking for other people. It just it had there's so many people that end up in the water. It's horrible. And when you're near water, that makes it worse. So that's one thing that, you know, <laughs> right. And that's why I know what you're talking about with the missing 401 scenario. I, I don't know what to take from that. You know, I don't think that it fits with this, but it could. It could in some senses because some of these cases, guys, there are no answers to. There is no... Um, common sensical answer that you can give to somebody and it, what do you say to that how do you respond to where did he go what happened but you can't give an answer to it you know what i'm saying so i i don't know what to to put that put out there for that 
So that's that's a good point, though, Chloe. I see what you're saying. There's something. It's not let. It's glitching. It's not letting me. Um. See. And then uh, phone went off around 12:58. There were some additional AT&T IP pings that uh, we, we've been really focused on uh, right there at his apartment, and then pretty close to his apartment area as well. So we've been really focused on those because we feel like the phone was possibly there somewhere. Um, but um, at, at this point, we'll probably never find the phone because of the time frame that we're in. So the phone ping there. Interesting. So that was all the way down the road on the same strip of road. Mm -hmm. What the heck was he doing all the way down there? No telling. I think we'll get a lot more information gained once all that forensic analysis of his devices come back because we'll know who he had been talking to online. We'll, besides just the friend that he had been playing video games with, maybe he had been talking to a girl online that no one knew about. We don't know until we get all that information back. Yeah, what if he had been Snapchatting with somebody or what if somebody had sent him a message on Facebook or TikTok or, or something like, hey, can you meet me somewhere? And Oh, oh uh, uh, Misty said that the police have said that that ping is not <clears throat> accurate. The one here by this uh, pain management center? Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah, Mark says, and Mark's right, a ping can go three miles with signal. Also, the number of towers will affect the ping. Yeah. But we're still, you know, we're still definitely uh, positive. And we have a, a map and a route there going of kind of those last movements with the phone pings. Uh, we've also learned Possibly. that when Caleb disappeared, he wasn't wearing shoes. He didn't have his wallet. Uh, he certainly wouldn't have been able to get very far on his own. Do you think Caleb asked for help from someone? Was he that type of person? Um, we don't know. We really don't know. Um, he is the kind of kid that would help somebody if they needed help. Um, so we, we really don't know. We don't know if he uh, came up on something and somebody needed help and we just don't know. We don't have that direction. And, and that's why we're really, really uh, begging everybody that has security cameras in, in, in and around Corpus Christi and other areas. Just take. It looks like his mom, too. I can't imagine what this family must be going through. So what if he went out there to help somebody? What Which if he saw family? somebody that looked like they needed help and he went out there and then something bad happened? That's another possibility. I mean, Unfortunately, a lot of these young men have good hearts and would stop, like his dad said, stop to help anyone. And there's a lot of people out there that will set people up to take a fall by pretending that they're struggling. So it's it's only something that you have to consider. Yeah. Five minutes. Go go back to that uh, two thirty to three thirty or two thirty to four o'clock time frame and hey, look at your camera and see. See if we can find anything because in today's technology, there's got to be a video out there somewhere. Yeah. And speaking of videos and just asking for other people to please come forward and help, uh, you're using social media to help in the search for finding your son. How exactly are you using that help and, and what do you want people watching right now to, to know? Um, social media is great. I mean, everything from, you know, obviously Facebook and, and uh, you know, I post the stuff on some of my business uh, LinkedIn pages, um, TikTok, Instagram, things like that. This is what drew me to this case. You see this picture right here? It mm -hmm. made me it made me think of Tyler Doyle. Yep, me too. And I kind of got the chills. And I was like, please say this guy did not get on the boat out in the water. And that's right. when I had I had to look into the case because you know, I mean, it's hard for me to cover every single case, but I know, I know. Just, uh, um this this is so wild. And Terry, there's been absolutely no talk or indication that he was intoxicated when he went out. Yeah, I wonder if I'm sure police have asked the roommates all of those questions. 100%. Misty says that they had had a barbecue and that they did have some drinks. So maybe he had a slight buzz or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're just hoping that, again, somebody sees something, somebody says something that would lead us to uh, a lead finding. Well, we are praying that your family gets answers. Uh, we'll continue to uh, keep a spotlight on Caleb and his story. Randy Harris, thanks once again. We'll check back in with you soon. Please keep us posted. Wow. Exactly. Did it rain? What was the weather? I'm not sure. Misty, was there any rain in the area when he went missing? Because sometimes that can that can harm the scent trail. Yeah, I know. So I just have to, that's the first thing that comes to my mind, is what was the weather? I know they said. Lou, if you look in the back, check. Mom, I'm going to start calling you that because it's quick and easier, but Mom, who is Mind of Monsters, put the link in for uh, David Politi's channel for... Um, I already answered her. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. I'm sorry, hon. 
anyway. I, Everybody calls me mom. You're good. Well, mine and monsters is it's quicker than saying mine and monsters. So mom. So my people call me mom. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It works out for me too. Thank you again very much. So it had been foggy. Oh, okay. Here, bloodhounds and canines were there. They've not released what they found or didn't find. That's fair enough. And then Misty says they use cadaver dogs, uh, like the third day, not really scent dogs. Well, he didn't take his vehicle at any rate if he left in a vehicle because his vehicle was still there. Yeah, but he could have certainly caught a ride with somebody. That's, that's true. why the that's why the uh the digital forensics is so important because anybody called his phone, called him on Facebook Messenger. Um you know, if he had a WhatsApp, Google phone number, like they could be able to see all of that and know exactly who his last person that was in contact with him was, you know, impossible. One of these things, one of the, one of the, one of these things are not like the other anyway. Sorry. Um, one of the things that bothers me with this is when we did that whole walk around with him yesterday in that area, standing at the corner of that complex by that area where that one picture was taken makes me believe that he very well could have been put out a, a feel for somebody to go pick him up from that area right there. Okay. Or that was part of the conversation maybe that was had. If there was a Reddit scenario, I don't know, but that's one of the thing that I keep going back to. If somebody either grabbed him from there or he was to be picked up from there to go wherever this was going or what could have happened in that sense. We still don't know that yet. I'm just saying, and I just want to put that out there with that when I figured out where that spot was last night, I can't let go of the fact that either somebody yeah, but he left without go ahead. Go ahead. Did he not leave without everything? Like he didn't have keys. Well, he didn't have his right, phone. And right, right. If you go out and meet someone though, you do bring certain things with you. Well, so... here's, here's the thing though. I agree with you. And that's why I think that the barefoot, no keys, no wallet, no nothing means that it was supposed to be a very quick interaction of some sort, possibly. Okay. Yeah, like just come outside and we'll say hello. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and at that point, you're grabbed and pulled into a vehicle and off they go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, that that's all. You know, I just wanted to throw that out there too, because I really can't get that out of my head, you guys. I just I keep going back to that in my mind every time I hear something. So yeah, because that Reddit, like, okay, it's a theory, but how reliable because I don't know about Reddit. Is there like a last active status that you can check on accounts? I'm like, not real familiar with it either. You know? I'd like to know stuff like that too, honestly. Yeah. I have to look into it a little bit more. But, you know, um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Something really bugs me about this. I keep feeling, that's why the alligator theory was like interesting to me because it just seems like he was standing here and then he wasn't. So mm. whether it was an alligator which I know sounds obscene, you guys. I, I keep thinking to myself, that's crazy, Dago. What the hell are you thinking about? But nothing else made sense unless somebody just rolls up and snatches him and pulls him in the car, and that's the end of it. And there yeah. they go. Nobody sees it because it's middle of the night. We saw the traffic out there. There was none. Okay. But yeah, I think alligators, though, they, uh, you know, they roam around and they do tend to pop up on cameras. So well, that, that might... was my other option with that. Yeah making sense to me it just if it was hiding in the bushes that are there by the corner of that complex mm -hmm. sure and out comes an alligator snatches you and yanks you back down into the water off they go that's yeah. why and the only reason why i pulled with that scenario was because nothing else has made any sense okay yeah. um so, and that, that you would hurt you would have heard like if somebody gets dragged by an alligator well, that's what i said but somebody yeah. said there wouldn't have been time to make a noise or to scream or to do anything and i'm like i don't know like i it, it's a, the very last scenario theory for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it makes sense because, yeah, alligators do kill people. But um, just that nobody heard in the complex around. Yeah. It's weird that he, it yeah. sounds. Yeah, it sounds like you, you're right. Like that scenario where somebody says, hey, come down. Let me just say hi to you. They met over Reddit or something. And he runs down with no shoes and just thinks it's a quick interaction. And then boom. Right. That's, that's that's exactly yeah. my thought on this too. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the the alligator thing was just something that popped into my head because 
No, it what, happens. It what happens. Else it does happen. And a lot of people yeah. that live in these areas say it happens all the time. So, mm -hmm. okay, we'll, we'll talk about it for a few minutes and see what if it if it could happen. And, and it, it can, you know what I mean? If there's, especially if there's a waterway right that close, they sit there and they hide mm -hmm. in these bushes and then boom, you see something moving, they grab you, you're gone. But again, guys, this is a very last, last scenario type theory type thing, in my opinion. I truly believe that somebody may have said something to him or, you know, within a messaging thing, hey, I got something for you. Hey, come here real quick. Or, hey, this because of the barefoot thing. Mm -hmm. And he goes out and never comes back because he was taken at that point. That's, again, my opinion. So um, moving on. So we track that down. That's yes, why the Reed. phone evidence is so important. They didn't oh, get that in Tyler Doyle's case. Yeah, you know, the, phone, that's the that's phone evidence is vital in any case. I think the phone for forensics will tell us a whole lot more. Uh, and Terry, yeah, they've had drones out searching. I don't know about the rural so areas outside of town, but I know they've had drones within town. And so Misty says, yeah, they've had them covering the rural areas too. Michelle says she's getting Athena Strand vibes. You mean like... Somebody could have ran over him with something and then put him in the vehicle because they hit him. I said there was a drought and Caleb went missing. Uh, oh, yeah, those cell phone dumps are expensive. I know I used to work for AT&T Wireless. That's unknown, Dandy. I don't have any information on that. But that's a good question. Well, Missy, I, mean, I, know that, like, I know that they've talked to that Uber Eats driver and pretty much said that they have no reason to believe that they had anything to do with the disappearance. So, I mean, I, I've seen that speculation myself, but I mean, right now we're trying to just focus on what law enforcement has put out. And, you know, law enforcement cleared that out. Uber Eats driver, according to the last statement law enforcement made. Yeah. That they cleared that that person. They have seen that person on video camera picking up the order at the convenience store. And they also seen the the. Uh, Uber Eats driver on video surveillance after Caleb went missing and that cleared her according to that WordPress. And I will, I will drop that document again. If you guys want to reference, this is the most recent statement released from Corpus Christi. And I'm going to drop that now. That is from the Corpus Christi police department blotter. And that is, uh, that's the most recent update I've seen from law enforcement um, was on the 28th. So, um, Dandy, according to someone in chat, they said no, because that was one of my questions, too, was, but, you know, there could have been somebody that maybe somebody didn't know about, like you said. Um, yeah, I mean, and that's why the, the phone information is going to be so incredibly important when that comes back, because they'll tell us who he was talking to. Maybe he was on a dating website. Maybe he had been chatting it up with some girl from school. We don't know right now. Exactly. You're welcome, P9 New York. Thank you so much for being here and listening to this case. Um, and, and, you know, guys. Something else to think about. I've seen a lot of cases where things don't show up like they are. But if there, there's dating apps going on, there's there's jealous people all over. And again, this is a reach, okay? But don't forget that there are other situations. That, what if he's talking to a girl that has another had a boyfriend that was jealous of something, and that person grabbed him because he or set him up to meet? Maybe said that they were her. And set him up and said, hey, meet me out here for this or whatever. And grabbed him and took him and did something they shouldn't have done. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of different scenarios that can fit into this bracket. But I can't get past hearing all of these other people that went missing in this same exact area that have a lot of the same MO, the link with the fishing. I mean, you guys, I, I'm sitting here watching this and all these things are rolling through my head. Okay. And I got emails from people I'm looking at, too, that are saying different things, which is where some of the stuff comes from. But th this whole thing is crazy and yes Debo that's another good point too I was thinking about that about 15 minutes ago the similarity to to Riley's situation other than the fact that we know Riley was intoxicated is crazy it really is it's very close okay if there are two different areas but I'm just saying you know it, it's still it, it takes me back to the smiley face murders okay not the happy face the smiley face scenarios where these people walk out of bars and then they end up in a waterway. That's how they're found. And that's not necessarily this, but a lot of these things, these pieces, you can pull them apart and put them back in something else and they all fit. That's what I'm saying. So 
again, I'm I'm gonna it, it is similar in some senses to uh the Riley Strange case, uh crime and conspiracies. The only thing is that they Riley, like I said, was highly intoxicated. We don't believe at all that 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 Caleb was. Just that's all I'm saying. You know, if you guys have thoughts on this case or you have information, um, you know, please, you know. Let us know, especially if you're local to the area. It helps us to kind of understand the case. We want to make sure if you see Caleb Harris's poster, I'm going to make sure that I post it over on my YouTube community wall and my Facebook and Twitter. I may do a TikTok video for Caleb. Um, if you see it on any of these social media outlets, for me, Arctic Fox, Mind of Monsters, please share these posters out, guys, because you're going to get it in front of a whole group of people that may not be subscribed to our channels. So that's why it really takes a village to help locate missing people because every time you share it and then encourage your audience to share it out we are getting it in front of thousands of other people that might not otherwise see it organically from our own channels and that's how exactly. people get found so it really we depend on you guys like we can't do it without you that's why we say it's a team effort like we work together as a team but the real team comes in with the people that watch these live streams so if you're catching this live now or maybe you're watching this on the rewind like if you see um these missing flyers like it would be really wonderful if you guys could share that out because whether you think it makes a difference or not it really does it really does it's a blessing Without our community, we're just sitting here staring at the screen, talking to ourselves. So I was just about to say that. everybody. Yeah, I mean, otherwise it, we it would really just be like, talking to the like, three of our assist in getting out the correct information to help find these missing people, um, because it, otherwise it's not productive. We get Facts focused matter. on one situation, you know, and then there's if we could utilize our time, if every person instead of you know. How is what helping crime and conspiracies? We're learning about the situation. There's more coming where somebody comes up and speaks on it and the situation. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. If you don't like this, okay? I'm not trying to be rude by any means, but I don't understand. And so the similarities things would cover the similarities on these two cases is they were both tall. They were both college boys, and they both went missing near water. There's no tenfold hats that need to be pulled out or anything. Those are the similarities, is they were college students. They were both tall, very fit boys that went missing by water. Even though Caleb is still missing and Riley was found, those are the similarities. Right. I mean, that perfect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, bingo, that's what I mean. There, there are definitely, plus with this case and the other ones that we saw earlier, there's a link with the whole fishing thing, in my opinion. I can't get past that. I'm sorry. Um, th this is where I'm at right now with these other missing people from this area. Um, it, it blows my mind that nobody else has seen this beforehand before you guys saw it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just can't get past that. Uh, and that builds a whole level of stories in my mind right now that this definitely could go in that direction. But again, yes, the similarities are there, period. There's there's no two ways to look at it. And again, anybody that doesn't like how I'm doing this, doesn't like this at all, you don't have to be here. I appreciate everyone that's here by any means. And if you think I'm rude, then I'm rude. Sorry. Um, typically, I'm not. But I get irritated when people want to come at me because I'm doing something a certain way. I'm trying to help people. That's all I'm trying to do, guys. I'm not trying to gain anything out of this. I'm not trying to do anything out of this. I'm trying to help figure out where these people are. So if people don't like the way I'm doing it, I'm sorry. There's other creators that maybe do it better. Go check them out. That's all I can say. Uh, and that doesn't go towards all of you guys. I'm saying that directed at the person that was causing the commotion over here. So thank you again for everybody that's here and, and everybody on panel. I appreciate every bit of this, guys. So. Thank you very much. In this case, you know, we could have 10,000 videos about missing people. I so, agree. And if more creators could come together instead of fighting each other and getting all involved in drama like we do here, then this whole community would be a much better place and would be seeing a whole lot more people found. We'd be a force to be reckoned with if you get everybody to play on the playground together. Yeah. I mean, we can exactly. all agree to disagree. I don't know if anybody's innocent or guilty because I'm not law enforcement. It's it's not my job. I'm not going to have somebody stand in judgment or um, I'm not here to ask those 
questions. I'm here to get the information that I can put out about a missing child or a missing adult that needs to be brought home safe because their family misses them. And that's what matters the most. And that's why this is important that you guys share Caleb Harris's information out if you see it. Whoever talks uh, just oh, wow. uh, has a pleasant uh, voice. Oh, expires? It expires tomorrow. Gee, why? I did not Thank know you that. for bringing that to my attention. I didn't even realize that it expired. Oh, my gosh. Arctic. I hadn't seen anything about it. I know. I didn't know that either. Insane. Now, who actually put up Missy the $25,000 reward? There's six missing young men in the area right now. That is insane. Here it is, doggo. This is where the locals started talking about the other wow. men that are missing. I'm sorry, I, I spoke there, <laughs> but whoever talks, I don't know whose channel this is. That lady has a very pleasant voice, by the way. Oh, that was, um, this is Arctic Fox's channel, but that was Duchess or Duchess. Oh, okay, okay. Um, again, guys, I'm sorry for that little outburst. I'm not trying to come off as sounding harsh. This, this is, I, I'm very passionate about this type of stuff, if you haven't been able to tell. Um, and, and, Sebastian's case has really yanked on my heartstrings a lot. Okay, so it's caused me to be more defensive about this kind of this kind of stuff because I am pa passionate about this. So, again, I don't mean to sound rude or mean towards anybody. People have the right to their feelings about how I handle things or do things. I get that, and that's your right. But just like coming at me saying, "What good does this do?" It, I think it does a lot of good. That's what this next part right we're getting ready to hear is why we're doing this. It's the most important part of this because I cannot go past the similarities within the fishing thing, the ages, the, the build and look of these young men, blah, 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 so on and so forth. I'm just saying, guys, there's too many likenesses that mix in with this, this theory here. So, and again, thank you very much, mom, as I'll put it, and for bringing us to this point. Everybody else that's here with me, I appreciate you all very, 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 very much along with everybody in chat. So thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you for letting us know that. And this is in the Corpus Christi area. Are there ages Apparently. around the same? Wow. Their ages are around the same. Wow. Mm. Okay, I'm going to have to go in there and check this out. Hold on a second, let me. That's extremely see if concerning. I can pull something up on my phone, see if I can find something over here. I'm going to go to Corpus. G. Watts says most, most of them were also fishermen. That's crazy. Oh. Okay, hmm. let me go to their police department here. <clears throat> Has see an old case back from 2021. Missing 29 year old. Let's see what else I've got here. Thanks for uh okay, she's out already. Oh, Thank you, Luke. Yeah, I mean the appreciate you very so, much. Gia says that the uh, prosecutors have said that uh the other missing aren't believed to be connected, but I don't see how they can so easily rule that out with them being so close in age, all missing from the same area, and especially if they're all fishermen. that That's just weird. Do we know the period of time? Let's see. There was, <clears throat> apparently there was a young lady that was missing in Corpus Christi, but she has been located March 13th. So that's good. Um, I'm still looking to see if I see any other ones on their page, because that's where I get the updates, you know, on their Facebook page. Good point, Dandy. Good can point. We, can we drop um, Duchess her link again, as well as Artix as well, please? I really appreciate it, Mods. Thank you so much. Um, and that guy's on screen right there is Mom or Mina Monsters. That's her link to her channel. Again, all of this stuff um, uh, that these channels cover is very important. Um, Kim Holmes. Yeah, I'm not talking about the happy face killer. There was another one that I covered a year ago. It started out of Chicago and bounced around into Texas and everything. I, I believe that they're calling the smiley face killer differently, different completely than the happy face. But you are right, uh, truck driver, about that. Or about that being a truck driver. I'm sorry. 
Dago, before you start that, yes, ma'am. Can you check? There is a live cam for those um, bridges or the one bridge. Okay. And you, if I'm not mistaken, you can date it. So, whenever okay. when when he disappeared, I wonder if we can look at that live cam from date and time or something a certain date and time. Because okay. it's all live, and I don't know how far back you can go. But do you know the... Uh... Oh, oh, it's the main Corpus Christi uh, bridge. I'm not sure what it's called. I dropped it in back chat, Doggo, the big, long link. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's already on top. Oh, of yeah. Is that it? Okay. Hold on. Let me grab it real quick. And see if you can backtrack on that. Have you checked, uh, Mom, at all? If I can call you that, sorry, M O M. Yeah, you can call me that. Everybody calls me that. Like all of my, all of my subs in the communities that I frequent, they all call me okay. mom. It's shorter. Usually, I get an M and a heart and an M in chat. So, especially okay. if you're on the phone and YouTube doesn't have the update done. Well, um, it, it is nice to meet you, by the way. Very nice to meet uh, you as gotta, well. You got to check out her channel, uh, Golf. She's got an amazing channel, okay. and she does amazing work with her channel too. I'm telling you. So, um, all right. These are the webcams. Um, Ooh, which one would be the close? I don't see it so good as you do, but one would be the one closest to where he lives, I guess. And we're the, we're talking about that bridge, right? Yeah, yeah. Have and is already... there like a date and time on that you can go back to? Because otherwise it's sort of irrelevant. I is guess it... when I bring it up, it might give me, hopefully it'll give me that option. Oh, okay. That's the one you've got your mouse on. Right here? That one? Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see here. I'm doing... I don't, I don't see it if it gives me the option for a date or time. Um, um, yeah, like before you hit that spot. Oh, here's the date up here in the corner. Oh, okay, good. So let's see here. Good God, from 13. There's no way I can type it in. Uh, no way. There's got to be a place I can put a date in here. Um, let me see here. Okay, I hope what I'm doing is working because it's 413, 513, 13. Am I reading the date right on this or is it just rolling through a loop? 36, 15, one day ago, 24 minutes ago, 56 minutes ago, seven. That looks like pictures though. Like that's live pictures. So you want a live feed? Feed, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let me see. Do you know anything about this, Mom? It's like okay. still it's like still photos that roll over. Okay. So let me see something here. Webcams, webcams, city of corpus, location search. I wonder if I typed in that address if it would take me directly to that area right there. Um and then put in the date too, just in case. <laughs> Who it knows? Could, it might give me let, wait, what's this over here? City, city, Corpus Christi. Okay, no, that's just okay. Um, what was that address again? Was it nine one nine three eight nineteen thirty? I think I got so many things in my head. Um, no, that's not going to work because it's taking me to different areas. Okay, so it's just going to have to stay by that then. And it's Jocelyn. That's the only one. Okay. 20 minutes ago. I don't think it'll let me do it, Golf. Mm, okay. Back out of that. Back, Back out, out of that screen. Yeah, just that screen. 
okay. see the little play button? Uh, right below the picture in the middle. Oh. Ah. Okay. So there's a drop down over by the eye. And you can drop it down. 30 days. Okay. okay. Lifetime, 12 months. So we're going to go... Um, Interesting. Okay. 12 months. All right. Oh, it's doing stills. Yeah, it's, it's oh. not going to show up like video, video, I don't think. What's this here? Add a webcam. Okay. Well, shoot. What the hell? Um, hold on. It was like super foggy the night that he yeah, disappeared I, too. So definitely, definitely. Okay. So yeah, and also they might have taken it down for the investigation. Who knows? Yeah, I was gonna say that right? Yeah. Uh, I just know there's a live cam streaming because of weather conditions in that mm -hmm. area. So they do have it, but. I'll have to do a little more research and see what I can figure out to pull that yeah. up in, in like more in depth. Because okay. that. Thanks for checking. No, thank you for, for bringing it up because it's a great idea. Um, I'm sure, though, if there is anything that they have probably pulled it um, mm -hmm. per the investigation, I would think so. Either way, good point. And thank you, Mom, for, for putting that in the back like that. It's nice to have that to look into. Yeah, because there's history and, oh, wait a minute, history and climate. Uh, weather archive. March. Oh, that's sort of a weather, yeah. It's not a thing. Okay. All right. We'll do, we'll figure it out. Uh, I wanted to, I'll figure something out with it. Either way, I appreciate that and having that. Um, all right, let's go. Gosh, one of the first things that it brought up was this article that says authorities get arrest warrant for Corpus Christi mother in search for a critically missing child with nonverbal autism. That was Edwin Buskirk II. Do you remember wow. that case? I do. That was out of Corpus Christi. That was in January. Yeah. Yeah. Golly, I'd forgotten all about that was in Corpus Christi. Hey, Rob says there's a lot of sex offenders in the area. Oh, no. See, that that was, I didn't want to have to bring that up, but that always crosses my mind, K-Rob. That always crosses my mind. Whether it's a child or an adult, that's one of the first things that I always think about is, and I don't want to, that's terrible that, I, that your mind goes to that. Wow. Just trying to see if I saw any other missing people on their page and <clears throat> I haven't seen really anything. And also just, just so y'all know, I mean, if you have a missing person from your area that you would like us to cover, you can email me at Arctic Fox True Crime at Gmail and Duchess's email is in her channel description. She can put it in the chat. Um, and you can also yes. email Mind of Monsters. We all will cover anyone as long as we're made aware of the information. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You need a flyer? Yes. Thank you so much for that little bit. That means the world to me. It really does. I appreciate that. And the super chat, of course. But thank you for, for what you said. Dago, you're generally the nicest person I've seen on YouTube. And I know you help people. I sure as hell try. Uh, you helped me and never knew it. So keep up the great work. Thank you so much. And I appreciate that more than you'll ever know. Let us know. I make flyers and it's no charge. If you have a person that he needs is a 150 flyer. 150 miles from the Mexico border. Oh, wow. Wow. 
there I dropped my email to if anybody. Hey, Jason, where have you been hiding? And happy Easter, everybody. It's hard to believe this year we're already into into Easter. Can you believe that? I know. This year, this year it, has crazy. flown by. It's been a heck of a year, though. It's yeah. like 2024 went off with a bang, and it's just been one crazy thing after another. And I know, you know, what we do here, we see a lot of just insane, crazy behavior in cases. But it just seems like 2024 just started out with like, hey, here I am. Get ready for it. Put your boots on. Yeah. Your big waiters, like your bib waiters. Right. Because the ish is deep this year. <laughs> and make sure they're snake proof. <laughs> yes. Snake proof, poop proof, crazy proof. I'm telling you, this it's been a lot. And we're only four months in. I just can't imagine. Okay, wait, let's see. No, this was a suspect. I'm still looking for all of these missing people that y'all were talking about. Because I want to know, like, if there is something that's going on in this town. Um, you know, my mind goes to dark places. To It goes to the mind of monsters. <laughs> it goes to, do we have a serial killer? Yeah. Do we, you know, do we, because I mean... I hate to say it, but these are the times that we're living in right now. I think this is probably the things that I've seen in the last six months, watching things that have happened to children at the hands of their own family. Um, cases of domestic violence that have ended in the way that they've ended. These random cases like Athena Strand that I never would have guessed would have been the situation. I mean, I have to I have to take days off. Because it, it can, it's very overwhelming to think that so many people are out here hurting other people like that. It's, it's, it, it is. It is, Kimber. It's the times we're living in. It's like revelation, y'all. If you don't know the Bible, you should go get one immediately. And if even if you don't read any of the other books, you just should go ahead and start with revelation because you need to educate yourself. It is the end of times, Barbara. <laughs> My grandma said, you just wait. And I, when I was young, that didn't mean much to me. But now it means everything. And that's why it's important that we we have to fight the good fight. You know, we have to try to maintain our sanity and we have to maintain our morals, and our ethics and our values. And we have to stick to our guns. We have to continue to focus on these kids and we have to focus on doing the right thing. Even though some days I want to pull my hair out hey, over the craziness. Hey, yes, hey, hey, that, Archie. Gia says, look at Kill 3 News. Yesterday, full interview, the assistant police chief talks about several missing. I've got it dropped in back chat mm -hmm. if you want to pull it up. That we are still very actively involved in the investigation. It may not be as visible as it was the first week where you see officers out combing through fields and riding motorcycles and bikes and whatnot. Most of the investigation now is going on behind the scenes. It has to do with the looking into digital data, forensic uh, computer examinations and things like that. Earlier this afternoon, I spoke with Caleb's dad uh, by phone. He told me that he was 100% uh, confident in CCPD and what you are doing to find his son. One thing that did concern him was all of the social media chatter out there, the disinformation that folks might be spreading, uh, the allegations that mo folks might be spreading. What would you like the, the community to know um, just about some of the details to help clear up some of those uh, misconceptions? Just for fair use, I'm going to jump in on that. And they, that, you know, social media and YouTube is a great thing as long as it's facts and it's not the misinformation that hurts the cases. Exactly. I agree. Questions that are out there. Sure. Uh, social media can be a great tool for law enforcement, uh, especially in a search for, like this. We have reached out through our social media asking for people to submit any tips, any information they may have. But the other, you know, it's a two-sided sword. The other side of it is that people start speculating and making accusations and uh, going off on tangents with information that they don't have. And unfortunately, we can't tell the public everything that we know in this investigation. It just doesn't work that way. We're not able to be completely transparent and share everything that we know. Uh, but we can very confidently say we have ruled out the roommates as having anything to do with this uh, disappearance, his friends that he was communicating with that night uh, over social media. Uh, we've ruled them out. Uh, we've ruled out the uh, the Uber driver that um, that uh, made the delivery. Uh, we have investigated very thoroughly all of those individuals. We wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't look at 
at that possibility that they could have been involved. But we've done that and we've put, put a lot of work into it initially and we've crossed them off the list. So our next step is, you know, to continue forward and see, you know, what so, exactly happened. to name, we um, searched the apartment. Uh, the roommates were very cooperative with us. Uh, there were no signs of any struggle, any violence. Uh, Caleb's uh, owned a couple of firearms, several firearms. They were all accounted for. The roommates owned firearms. They were accounted for. Um, the fishing gear, like I said, he was a very avid fisher uh, fisherman, and there was some speculation that maybe he went to go scout a new fishing hole or something like that, as odd as it seems at three in the morning. But all his fishing gear was there. His waders were there. Uh, so there was nothing like that that would suggest uh, that he was, you know, had gone off on his own. Now, I'm from a river city, and again, for fair use purposes, and I'll just put my two cents in, I've been night fishing. So for an avid fisherman, it's not that uncommon to go fishing that time in the morning either. And it seems like they're on top of it. Law enforcement is really taking it seriously, and that makes my heart smile to know that they're actually, you know, doing the legwork and the behind the scenes. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. Hey, Vicki, I'm welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, for any great distance. With the amount of attention a case like this gets uh, when you are talking about a missing college student, this is receiving national attention. How do you handle the amount of maybe tips or information coming in as a police department? Well, we set up a couple of uh, different venues where, uh, there again, like I said, we try to use social media to get help from the public. We've made that outreach. Uh, we've given them several numbers to call. We've uh, suggested uh, Crime Stoppers is one of the uh, one of the ways that they can submit anonymous tips if they don't want to be identified. There's also a tip line that the family has set up along with a reward. Uh, those tips come to us. We review those tips and for viability to see if they're uh, something that we should be following up on immediately or something that can be delayed, but we review all of them. So, so far we've probably gotten uh, around 50 tips all together, maybe, maybe more than that, uh, through the several different ways uh, that we're getting them. And every tip matters, no matter how small you may think it is, it matters. No, sorry, needed. Victoria. At yeah, this sometimes point in it's the just that one small tip that you think is insignificant that everyone knows and they'll crack a case wide open. Yep, exactly. Every tip matters. You know, they get, they get them, they vet them, they go through them, but everything matters. You don't know. If Have a great night, Tracy. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate you very much. It could be the smallest little pinpoint that is that pinpoint that was the puzzle piece that's missing. Do you Say that again, Polly. Are you for sure they found Dylan's remains? Really? When and where? This is a case I covered almost two years ago, you guys. It's long ago. Yeah, I'm, I'd like to know, too, because... I'm the one that made his original flyers and his timeline for his mom. Right, right. Yeah, we've been holding this case. I haven't talked about it in a while because when and where, uh, Doodle, is there something we can watch? Uh, not to take away from this, but, you know, um, it's on the West Idaho News Channel. Okay, do you guys mind if I pull this down and pull that up real quick? No, please do. Was that the body they found yesterday? No, I don't think so. I don't, oh my God, I don't believe that would be that. I mean, not in that area at least, but you never know. Okay, hold on, folks. Um, that blows my mind. I mean, it's well past due, but okay. West Idaho News, you said? Or East Idaho News, you mean? Is that what you were saying? Um, I think you can search Nate Eaton as well. There you go. Okay, thank you. Uh, both of you guys, actually. The latest update on his official page that's family run. There's a mm -hmm. post from the 30th. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Hold on a minute. Good Lord. Thank the Lord. Finally something. Okay, I can only imagine Candace. Oh my God. Newscom. We have some breaking news to bring you right now. The body of Dylan Rounds has been found. Dylan Rounds, his remains have been found in the remote area of Lucen, Utah. 
Dylan is the young 19 year old who vanished over Memorial Day weekend back in 2022. He was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning his remains were found near or in Lucen in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, Rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished, and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. His mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today. In, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in um, or, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he, again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point, uh, but they, they do have the remains because of, uh, of where James Brenner led them. This is a spot where James Brenner had his camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when, his, when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, they found his boots right there behind that mound of dirt, which was some distance off. And there was also a shed right by James, Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner cleaned that shed to the to the point of how it looks now, you know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family. And he did take those to a, uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would, would likely have come into play if, if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, according to Dylan's family, as part of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They, of course, are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since for two years now. But Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check, that was delayed. Uh, however, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it, it, could, it could be had sooner rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the Nevada-Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucin quite a bit. This was another if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to to where Lucin is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there was a lot of, of look, a lot of focus on Montello. And then it seemed to shift into Lucin. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we, they do have an airport, as you can see, if we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's it's quite quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin. But this is where his body was found. And this is where 
family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief now that his his remains have been found. So there still are a lot of questions. There still are um, some court stuff to obviously get worked out, to get solved, to get taken care of. This has been a case we've covered extensively on East Idaho News since Dylan vanished. Um, in fact, here was a picture just at CrimeCon last year. They put up a Have You Seen Me poster with all of these uh, nice messages around them. Uh, keep fighting. Love how his parents represent him. We will find you, Dylan. Uh, hold on to hope. And then there's these wonderful photos that his mother has shared with us uh, and on publicly on social media. There's little Dylan as a young boy feeding pigs. There he is on a tractor. He loved, loved, loved farming, was big into farming, big into the outdoors, fishing. There he is. Um, I don't know if he's taking care of a sheep there. looks like he might be. And here he is on a tractor, which again, he loved to farm. And that's what took him out to that location so that he could begin farming. He was raised in Eastern Idaho. His father is still in Eastern Idaho, Justin Rounds. And um, tonight, again, they have the answer they've been waiting for. They have recovered Dylan Round's body. We will continue to follow this story uh, and bring you the latest developments. We have reached out to the Fox Elder County Sheriff's Office to see if they have any, uh, any um, comment. What usually happens in these types of cases is they, do, they cannot confirm right away 100% like we know the ID. They'll send the body away for identification, and then it takes a day or two to get 100% confirmation. So that might be the, the case in, in this particular case, uh, but we will just have to wait and see what they have to say. Uh, but we will keep you updated. And tonight, our thoughts, our prayers are go out to Dylan and his family, such a, a big piece of the puzzle that's finally, hopefully closed in and bringing them a little bit of a closure or at least some answers to the questions they have had for so long. I made Eaton reporting. Wow. Exactly what I thought, Dago. I know, I know. It was so brutal when they found that man, but yeah, this boy deserves a moment of silence, they go. I just I, I was just gonna say that. Um poor boy. I'm floored because we we covered that pretty hot and heavy for quite a while, and I swear Candace knew that the entire time. Mm. I know she did, but yeah, guys, if we can. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask us if we can just to to take a moment of silence here. I'm gonna shut everything down, quiet it down, no typing and chat and everything until I come back. If we can do that, I really appreciate that from everyone. Um, so thank you guys. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, everybody. Thank you so very much for that. Um, if we could throw some, put some love in the chat for this too, um, in support of Dylan and his family right now, and, and God bless every one of them. God be with them. Um, <clears throat> Molly, they found Dylan Brown's um, remains. I, I guess it would have been early this morning. Um, so if you guys could do that in support, um, this was such, it, this Molly has been around for that case. Um, mama bear, uh, miss wisdom, obviously mom up here, mind a monster said that she did the original flyers on her end of thing. I mean, we, there's a lot of us in this community that were really, really hunting for him for a long time. 
So. Oh, this really got me. Oh, wow. It, I mean, it's good news, but yeah. bad at the same time. You know, we always hope and pray that for some weird reason that these these people are going to come walking out of the darkness and say, here I am, you know, in our, in our minds, our hearts and our stomach and our guts, you know, tell us that's not true, but we always hold that close to our hearts in some senses. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you Since know, they had that man too. I was like, oh no. Oh, right. You know, oh. and I just, I, I don't even know what to say. Like, God bless the family, you know, Justin and Candace. Um, I pray to God that, that they're okay. I'm sure that they're, they're, they're both very strong. Candace is one of the strongest women I've ever seen in my life that can deal with this types of things, you know, and Molly's out there very close to this guys, very close to this area. Um, mm -hmm. So she was really, really deep into this um, from the beginning. So I wanted you to be here to see this, Molly. I didn't know if you had seen it or not, but um, I'm glad that there's that there's there's closure of, of some form for the family now. They they put a lot of their their a lot of heart into this, and a lot of people did. A lot of people did. Thank you, Pamela. And Pamela was around for this too. She, you know, a lot of these people that are in here were here way back then uh, when we would do the shows that we did looking for him. So, and I got to tell you, Mind of Monsters, I'm, I didn't know, and I'm grateful to know that you were a, a part of this as well with the flyering and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, thank you so much for everything you've done. Um, wow. Ooh, yeah. I, I mean, Especially when you reach out to a mom and you talk to the mom and you talk to these families, you take these families into your heart when you do the side of this that I do. So I'm absolutely sorry. no, I'm just so cool. you hold it's out okay. the hope, you know, it's okay. I know we all do. We all do. Like I said, we all have that little piece in the back of our heart that says, okay, he's going to show up one day and he's going to be okay. And, that's what makes this so hard for all of us because we do really put a lot of our lives into this, our hearts and passion into this, doing what we do. I mean, if you guys watch one video of Mind of Monsters, you'll see it. And and, and that's why she's here. Um, and Golf Inspector's been involved in a lot of these cases with all of us too from a long time ago. And, and Molly and Mama Bear and all the people that are here, we, we this goes way back. Um, <laughs> it 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 does um claire bear it really does <clears throat> um thank you mom for doing all that for them yeah when i when i got involved he didn't have a fire or he didn't have a timeline or nothing and i set him up a timeline and had talked to candace and, you know Mm -hmm. communicated with Candace on Facebook and stayed, you know, and searched and for updates and mob crew did a lot, you know, going out and searching for him. And like when Brenner was arrested and, you know, all of our hearts dropped below our stomachs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that too. That was because th there was, there was a feeling that came with that man and I can't describe it. I just, it, it was so brutal somehow when they arrested him and I just felt something was not right. I knew it. I just felt it. Sorry. Oof. Sorry for his family. And she's such a sweetheart. Candace is like a warrior. You know, she, she built the, the Facebook group, <laughs> Dylan rounds legacy group. And they've been out, they out seeds and fly, you know, and, and his Never. memory. She would sit there day in and day out, um, making those those crafts that she was making for this, and just she's got to be one of the strongest women I've ever spoken to in my life. I did Aww. interviews with her along with another creator, spoke to her a couple different times, and she's just I I'm so happy on one hand for her and Justin right now, but. On the other side, it's very hard. Yeah, at least they found him, and that's the only you know part yeah. of it. That's it. That's you know that sh sh they found him. You know they can bury him. So 
There was no need for this, for, for no. any of that. He was such a young, amazing guy that had his whole life built very, very, like, dedicated to what he wanted to do, and there's no reason for any of this. Mm. And these so are sorry. babies, you know, they're all our babies, and it's, it's the are. young boys. I've got boys this age, you know. The, the boys' all. cases always hit me like sledgehammer to the gut. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, the girls' cases too, but for some reason, just myself personally, the, the boy cases, they hit me like a ton of bricks. Mm -hmm. This is the only thing about doing what we do that I can't stand is, is the way that some of these cases end. Um, I know it's going to happen. I know it's there. I knew it when I started doing this, but I have to do what I do. Um, a lot of people don't understand when, when you have a passion for something like this, it's not a, I, that I want to do it. I have to do this, you guys. I feel like I have to do this. Okay. Which is why I take it so personal sometimes. Um, like I said, I'm grateful that they have some little bit of closure at this point. And I thank God that they have this person in custody. I just don't understand why the wait, why so long? Why, what were you holding out for? I just, I just don't. Get it. He was holding on for a plea deal. I know, but yeah, this is pathetic. It's been yeah. two years and, and it, Candace knew, I think Candace and Justin both knew from the moment this happened that, that, that Brenner did this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as I say, he came along with a whole lot of, feelings for me when they caught him and it's been what right. almost a year now or um, yeah so he's been in custody yeah oh, yeah. Oh, yeah he's been there for a while too well yeah. <laughs> karma's real and I, I i'm not a hater i don't hate on people even horrible people like this but it'll be handled the way it needs to be handled that's all i can say mm -hmm. um yeah, I don't even want to get into that one, but I yes, Pam, I that was horrible. This this was a very that was a very hard case, guys. It it really was. I it hit a lot of us really hard. Um, and and as it got cold, it was still hard. I I would go back to it here and there, and and I never forgot about it. But I just kind of figured, well, I really honestly kind of figured something like this was going to happen one day. I didn't know when, but. <laughs> And again, I'm sorry. This this one was close to me and a lot of us in here. It really was. And again, of course, Mind of Monsters. I see people meet for reasons, and I, I, I really believe that now. Um, I had no idea you were close to this. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I actually Thank saw him, saw Candace on another channel and um he didn't have a fire or anything. So I made him, you know, I reached out to her, which is sometimes families reach out to me. And then sometimes I reach out to families. I don't push. If you don't answer me, I don't message again. Sure. And sure. she was so grateful to, you know, and, and I usually, I get the same reply, you know, you, you don't charge anything. No, I don't charge anything. They're free. I make them out of the kindness of my heart to help because this is what I do to help. And, you know, he was one of my very first flyers, so it's a very rough flyer, and he didn't have a timeline, so I got with her and got her to give me all the details of a true timeline, and, you know. That's awesome. Yes, that's that absolutely. I am so appreciative if I didn't, that I, now that I know that, like, this was way back in my early, early, the very beginning of me covering true crime. I was, I was uh, working in hand with Doug Hutton um, at that point, which was. Um, I think it was, um, no thanks was the name of the channel at that time. Um, yeah. and I had just, just kicked off my channel at the beginning of yeah. that. And, um, me and Doug don't talk anymore, but I'm sure, you know, we were very passionate, both of us about that case. He did a lot of interviews with Candace and I, I have to give him that much. So I hope, I hope he knows about it and I hope he's okay. Um, cause he took that, I believe personally as well. Um, but this is why you guys do this like this it really is it really it, is. it, it helps i mean honestly you do what you can 
And this is what you can do is try to find people. And yeah, I, I know these things sometimes don't turn out the way we want them to, but I think it's so worth it. I think you're doing a God's work. Just, you know. So. I appreciate that. And yeah. there's a lot of us you out too, Mom. Sorry, of course. Oh, absolutely. There's so many of us out here. You know, I, that's why I hate to see when there's tur turmoil between um, creators because there's no reason yeah. for it. We're all here for the same reason. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all out here to be the voice for the voiceless and we all look for true justice for the uh, victims that, ha that happen to be in these cases and their families. Okay. A hundred percent. So God, uh, one second, guys, Molly, give me a second. When I when I tell you guys that Molly was close to this, Molly's a very emotional person. Um, hold on a minute. Um, Molly is a very very emotional person. She gets very close to these scenarios, um, like emotionally, mentally, and physically. Okay, so this is something that she did in regards to this case so molly this is beautiful um and thank you for doing it again beautiful molly so sweet and you know i'm here uh, Molly, if you need to talk later, okay? All right, you guys, I, I think I'm going to have to end this for today. I'm um, sorry. I really am. Um, You're fine. I was fixing to tell you I'm not in any place to be up here, so I'm going to drop down. Again, thank you for, for everything, Mighty Monsters. I appreciate you very much. Uh, we'll get together and talk again and when everybody relaxes a little bit or can, can come together, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, golf. Thank it's you. Always no, a pleasure. It's okay. It's okay. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. That's all right. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. Pamela, don't ever apologize for something like that, please. Um, we need to know these things, you know, um, and I would want anybody that they have this, this info to please, please don't ever, ever not tell me. Okay. Like we, we do this for those reasons and we have to find out good or bad what the, the end result's going to be. So I really appreciate it, Pamela. I know you've been there through the whole thing, been here through the whole thing, um, uh and i i this is why this is exactly why we do what we do period dylan sebastian caleb summer wells um just every bit of what we do you guys is for one specific reason and the end result like i said is not always what we want it to be but it it just is what it is sometimes so i thank every one of you um, well, first of all, thank you to all the, the panel guests that were up here today. Um, I, you have no idea how important it is that we do this. Everybody in the chat, I, I really, really appreciate you guys supporting this channel uh, and supporting everyone that does what we do. Uh, I see a lot of you guys in multiple channels, multiple communities. So thank you all for that and for supporting it and for caring uh, and really caring about what we do. It means the whole world to me, guys. Um, and if it wasn't for you guys, I, I would feel like what I'm doing is is in vain. So please know that from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate every one of you more than words could ever explain to you guys. Um, that's fact. So again, thank you all. 
uh, everyone here, please um, don't forget to love yourselves. Don't forget to, to love each other. Please give your loved ones, your, your little ones or whatever, your children, your spouse, an extra squeeze tonight. And again, thank you all for joining us. Um, I will be back probably tomorrow. Um, it's 8.30 now, so I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if I can make it back in here tonight. But probably tomorrow, guys, for sure. And again, guys, uh, much love to all of you guys. Uh, I just I can't even explain it. Um, good night to all of you, and God bless. And I will see you all soon. Bye-bye.